The Cellcast is recorded in front of a live streaming audience. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who just needs to get in the freaking robot! Welcome, Jacob. But I'm too depressed. I can't think of anything else. It's so terrible. Oh my gosh, my life is terrible. Be like, why did I live? I don't know why. Man, dude, suck it up. <laughs> why, thank you. Let me do. Let, her, let me introduce our co-host, a man who, huh, just decided and was like, oh yeah, I I can take on two like twelve angels whatever they are, by themselves, by yourself, because uh, you're, you're gusto in everything. Welcome to real life. That was terrible. I'm not a redhead, and I'm also not a female. That's true. But that doesn't really fit. <laughs> I'm assuming you're referring to Asuka. Yes! <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Who finally got over her yes. sadness and oh, depression. Oh, gosh. Yes. That I was like, this is Asuka that everyone talks about? Yeah. As being the coolest thing since sliced peaches? I don't see it now. Okay. And then, oh, now we're kicking butt. Awesome. Who wins? A, a, uh, Godzilla or an angel? Godzilla. Godzilla. God beats angels all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean. God, <laughs> night. Godzilla. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> Replay. Godzilla defeats angel. God damn. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. Why can't I say this correctly? <coughs> God defeats angels every day. Either way. There we go. There we go. How about we just go ahead and jump into this nonsense? Yes. You, well, you may not think it's nonsense, but I do. No, Let's we have opinions. On. We all have opinions. And like because technically, this is the finale of a animated series mm -hmm. segment, it just feels wrong not to start with this. Stephen Heath saying emotional damage and the Lost Four Kids opening of Evangelion by Eagle Eight Burger. Certified fresh and spoiler free. Jacob, I talk, I introduce this thing every time. You, this is really your, uh, your your show. Okay. For this, why don't you tell us about your spoiler free review of this movie? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, of all of Evangelion. No. Yes, this uh, yeah, if you want that, go back and listen to our previous <laughs> TAS. Uh, back in December. Back, yeah, way back in December, all the way up to pre up to our previous episode. Well, I first watched this. Well, I didn't even watch. It. I saw clips of it every once in a while when this the uh, the big. One sec. Bum bum. When this box came out which is the i think it's the platinum collection mm -hmm. of e neon genesis and evangelion uh that came out and i found it at walmart and the exact same day i found death and rebirth and the end of evangelion as a two-pack and i was like you know what i'll buy that i never heard i'd be like i knew there was a movie I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting because I liked the series. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the series. And I watched this and I'm like, what the crap is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, talk about emotional damage the entire time. It's just 
Shit, my freaking knees, man. I'm not talking about Digimon, just Mon, man. It's just like, jeez. The Jamaican geez. Mon. Yeah, cheese and crackers, man. This 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 movie is messed up in all kinds of forms. Like, it's it's got an interesting plot here and there, but oh my gosh, this thing is ugh. It's like this what I rec- is already not what I was expecting. No for this review. So well, I continue. Well, when I first watched it, I was like, "Wow, this is really interesting." I, I can respect for what they did with the film. I can respect it, but at the same time, I'm like, "Jeez, this all this is a this is heavy, man. This is really heavy." I'm waiting for a Back to the Future reference, but you're not going to do it. I don't have the thing. Oh wow. Never mind. I have a Back to the Future thing. Uh, never mind. I was. I was. So, I was something I, about the gravity of the situation. Everything's yeah. clear in the future. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you meant a sound clip, and I didn't. No. 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 I would. I would accuse you with that. No. Yes. Great Scott. Um, no. But I, I. I appreciate the film for what it is. The visualization of it is really good. It's just. Wow. This is heavy. Like extremely heavy kind of movie that. Is it really that heavy? And would I recommend this film? Probably not to most people. Be like, if you, if you watch all of Evangelion, you either, might as well. If you watch this or you watch it on Netflix, yeah, go watch it. Go watch it on Netflix. Um, just be prepared for a lot of really mess up crap. That's going to make you think, what the fudge am I watching? Mm-hmm. So, with that said, uh, would I recommend it? Uh, like I said before, it, if you never watched Evangelion, don't watch it. You have, go watch it. Just prepare to get your mind blown in so many other ways. That is all I'm going to oh, say. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say with that. How about you, Drew? What is your spoiler-free thoughts? So, this is my first viewing of mm-hmm. this particular film. I think I watched it three times. With the exception of oh. apparently having watched it so many t- mm-hmm. parts of it mm-hmm. so many times over the course of the last couple of years due to a YouTube yes. AMV series that I'm going to remain nameless because I, well, I don't know. I can guess I can say AMV hell. Yeah. That's not really a curse word. No, it's not. Um, it, Which is basically the people taking scenes from different animes and putting audio uh, with it to make humorous uh, vi- uh, clips. Either way. And a lot of them were Evangelion because, of course, uh, putting comedic stuff with dark stuff is always funnier. Yes. But this is the first time I had watching the whole thing, and I did not just watch the end of Evangelion, even mm-hmm. though that was all that was required mm-hmm. of me. I also went back and watched Death True Squared, I believe it's called. Yes. Which is literally just a recap of the 24 episodes prior to, well, up until the last two. It's all the episodes up to the last two. Uh Up until Pop It Top Again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, the death of Kaoru. But, and... Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I here's the thing. If you are going to watch the end of Evangelion, even if you've watched the other 24 episodes, do yourself a favor mm-hmm. and go ahead and watch the hour that is death true mm-hmm. because it condenses everything into a nice, easy package that is helpful in trying to figure out Mm -hmm. what is going on in this film. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's a requirement. I am suggesting that you do so. And it's not that the previous 24 Evangelion episodes Mm -hmm. don't do a good job of explaining. It's just, it's so condensed in, in that, in the one hour special there Mm -hmm. that, you you are pretty much prepared exactly for what they're getting at instead mm-hmm. of trying to figure out what's going on yes. for half the time, even though mm-hmm. once you get to the second half, you're still going to be asking what is going on. <laughs> but it's, it's an interesting film. 
I, I do suggest if you have seen Evangelion to watch the end of Evangelion. Yes. I kind of feel like it should be required. It should. I'm not saying it should be replacing episodes 25 and 26. As goofy, as pretentious and artsy as 25 and 26 actually are. But um, it is a great, I'm not going to say it's great. It's a, it is well animated. It is it is a finale basically of the story at least the original story at least what uh hideaki Anno felt about it after everyone poo-pooed the original ending mm -hmm. <laughs> which we'll get to that considering yes. one of the pits of trivia made me go ah you really are this really is actually telling people where they can stick it yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. the people who hated the original ending which like yes. i said i understood and i kind of I, honestly while this looks good i think i do prefer the original ending the more we've talked about it fair even though it still makes it almost in a way i just kind of wish it stopped at the death of cowru oh agreed we don't need those other two episodes and we really don't need this film but I don't know, it's just a nice way of finally putting some form of closure and this is very beautifully animated oh it is agreed don't get me wrong there but man does hideyaki Anno go on to the pretentious side of things just a little so on that note shall we dive deep into the orange juice you're not kidding let's go <laughs> the following is a spoiler filled review for the film the end of Evangelion. Bum, bum, bum. Listener discretion is advised. The end of Evangelion was written and directed by Hideaki Anno. Surprise, surprise to nobody. Who direct also directed, and I believe was, did a lot of the writing for, also for, Shin Godzilla mm -hmm. and Shin Kamen Rider. Yes. But not Shin Ultraman. He only produced that one. Yes. Which is odd because apparently he really likes Ultraman. But also he did uh, direct the Shin Evangelion movie. The entire rebuild yes. of the Evangelion films, which well, includes Shin Evangelion. Yes, which is the fourth film. Yes. Yes. It was also directed by Kazuya Tsurumaki. Getting into the cast, unlike normal episode, or, or say normal episodes, unlike all our other episodes, I am not mentioning where the, you can find these people and others because honestly... There's a lot here and it's, we could be here a while if I did so. So yeah. Shinji Akari in the original ADV English dub was voiced by Spike Spencer. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, Netflix dub was voiced by Casey Mongillo. Masato Katsuragi was voiced by Allison Keith in the ADV dub and Carrie Karenan in the Netflix. Ray Ayanami and Yu Akari was voiced by Amanda Wynn Lee and in the in the ADV mm -hmm. and Ryan Bartley in the Netflix. Hmm. Oscar Langley Soryu was voiced by Tiffany Grant in the ADV and Stephanie McKeon in the Netflix. Mm -hmm. Kaoru Nagisa Pop. was voiced by Aaron Crone in the ADV and Clifford Chapin in the Netflix. And lastly, Gendo Akari. Pop. Well, he didn't pop yet. Oh, he, he does kind of. Film. He does pop in this film. Well, everyone pops in this film. <laughs> that is true. He was voiced by Tristan McAv McAvery, sorry, mm -hmm. in the ADV dub and Ray Chase in the Netflix dub. Hmm. Kingdom Hearts Connections. Ooh. How many do we have? Four. Bear in mind, this includes Japanese cast um. and two English. So technically, in a way, three English casts. Oh, okay. ADV and Netflix? ADV original, ADV uh, director's cut, That's right. and Netflix. Oh, okay. Along with the original Japanese. Mm. I would go with probably six. You got it first try. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Points to me. Let's For go. the English dubs, which all of these are the Netflix dub. Hmm. Uh, Ray Chase, who played Gendo Akari in this, mm -hmm. plays the master of masters in Kingdom Hearts, who may or may not be the actual final villain if we ever get Kingdom Hearts 4. Hmm. But he did show up for like five seconds in a couple of these things. J.P. Karliak 
was is the voice of Kazu uh, Fuyutsuki oh. in the Netflix. Okay. And was additional voices in Kingdom Hearts and was just recently in another thing we reviewed over on our Patreon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Certain exciting da, 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 uh, da, da, television da, da, series. Da, 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 da. Greg Chun was voiced Ryoji Kaji in the Netflix. Yeah. And was additional voices in Kingdom Hearts. Mm. In the Japanese version, hmm. Akira Ishida is the voice of Kaoru. Pop. Mm. And was both Zexion and Ienzo in Kingdom Hearts. Oh, okay. The members of or the, the villainous organization 13. That's right. And we stay with this a lot. Mm. <laughs> Fumiko Tachiki, who is the voice who voiced Gendo Akari in the Japanese version, is alias and Lexus or Lexius in Kingdom Hearts. Mm. And Yuko Miyamura, the voice of Asuka Langley Soryu in this was the voice of Larxene in Kingdom Hearts. All three of these people played Organization 13 members. Huh. And literally, I was as I was making this list up, and I did the first one, and then the second one, I thought, okay, if this third one is Larxene. Because I kind of knew it was a girl. So it's yeah. like, there's only one female member of the organization. If this is Larxene, I'm going to have to go take a break. <laughs> and then I had to take a break. <laughs> But yeah, funny. that is what we've got in the cast list. Mm. Info and stuff. All right. Info and stuff. Uh, IMDb it is a six point, uh, six point. That's not even right. 8.1 out of 10. I uh, could not find anything on Rotten Tomatoes. Available to watch on Netflix or at least the Netflix dub. The Netflix dub and the Japanese version mm. minus in the television series. Fly me to the moon. Yeah, go fly me to the freaking moon. Fly me to the stinking moon. Right. Yeah, there's no fly me to the moon in this, no. by the way. But, the, again, not sponsored, but you can go to G Kids and go pick up the uh, the newer box set of this. Yes. Uh, Blu-ray. Actually, you can go down to Walmart and pick it up. That is true. Not our Walmart, but yeah. some Walmarts Some Walmarts. Because the Walmart here stinks. But we, we have virtually no video left. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, um... That's that's a sad day. Anyway, uh, production was uh, by Ava Comtinum. Comtinum. I'm going to say that wrong. Committee. Committee. Thank you. Committee. The, I, I, I saw, I saw the word in production committee. Yes, because I saw the word. And I was like, ah, uh, I can't spell this for some reason. I know the word. In, in my defense, the reason I was able to guess it without looking at your mm -hmm. notes is because everything in Japan's made with a production committee. Yeah, it's committee. Yeah. It's owned by 13 different companies, one of which is Sega. Yeah. Sega! Mm -hmm. Sonic it. the Hedgehog helped produce this thing, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get a hot dog to go with this movie? You mean a chili dog? Yeah. Chili dog. Extra cheese. Maybe a little onion. Either way. Either way. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I am probably going to butcher some of these names, so I do apologize. Hideaki Anna. <laughs> Yes, he directed it. I'd be facetious. I'm yeah. sorry. You think? <laughs> uh, Kaido Kaido Kawin Kaido Kawa. You spell it. You say it then. You say it. I'm sorry. I've seen this like in a hundred different places. Okay, so you just want me to go through all of the? No, just the, go, the one. The one. Kaido Kawa Shoten. Thank you. Project Ava. Gainax. Production IG. <laughs> <laughs> TV Tokyo Sega <laughs> Toei Company distributed by Toei Company that's about all they did for this one <laughs> that is true release date in Japan was July 19th 1997 and most recently here in the United States in 2024 in, in theaters last week last week so if you want not to get around emotion, here but it no. was last week yep if you want to get emotionally damaged, yeah, go watch it in theaters. Well, except it's probably gone now because I think oh, it was yeah. a one night only thing. Yeah, it was like but a two night, two nights, two nights, two nights, two nights, two hundred miles away. <laughs> yes. All right. So runtime is eighty seven minutes. Box office, uh, and the United in the uh, United Kingdom. No, in, in Japan. Japan. In Japan. In Japan. Yeah, although it was a two point 
47 billion yen, or you can trans translate that to uh, 19 million. I did just recently look up the recent box office releases. Let's see. Uh, we're going by these numbers. Uh, domestically, it um, uh, 1.3 million dollars. Internationally, uh, 261,223 with a worldwide gross of 1.4 million uh, million dollars. So that is the current what this movie has made over the span of two decades. Going back to my notes. All right, home release. Now I'm only I am only going to refer to the North American Canadian 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 A eh? K A. Eh? Eh? Um, I, I there's probably I really want to make some Canadian jokes, but I'm not going to because I don't know if our, we have any listeners that listen in Canada. If you do, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, the North Amer North American releases of this film. Uh, North American company AD, AD Visions, uh, respectively for the original series adaptation, was uh, intriguingly interested in acquiring the end of Evangelion, the end of Evangelion's distribution rights before Gynex decided, uh, demanded too high of a fee for its licensing. In July 2000, uh, 1998, AD Visions, AD, AD, Visions, AD Vision announced it would negotiate with uh, Gynex to release the film overseas. In 2000, and I keep saying 2000, 1999. In your defense, it was a lot. There was a lot of stuff going on in 2000. Yes, there were. The rights were purchased uh, for the U.S. for two million dollars by the company of Manga Entertainment. That's a very is that the company still exist anymore? Uh, it's been bought out, I think, by somebody. Uh, the company announced the release of the Western edition of The End of Evangelion on October of the same year, but the release was postponed. Manga Entertainment initially stated that they would interview Ano and... Wow. Okay, Manga Entertainment was bought out by, uh, well, it was absorbed into Stars Incorporated, which hmm. became Lionsgate Home Entertainment, the ah. U.S. branch, while outside of the U.S., it was acquired by Funimation, and now, which is now Crunchyroll. Ah, okay. So, yeah, there's that. Okay. What am I looking up here? You are looking at, how do you spell that word? Surumaki. Surumaki. Sulumaki. Sulumaki. Okay. Close enough. Yes. There again. We I apologize. We apologize. Sometimes I have a hard time enough we, with English. We, we have a hard enough time with American names, much yes. less anybody else's. That is true. That is true. I was told that in high school once. Let's just go on. Um, to provide a provide the Western fans with an ex. Um, with an experience of the feature film, but no interviews were included in the final DVD release, and the release date was again postponed until September 2022. The end of Evangelion was included in a, in the standard edition, collector's edition, collector's edition, and the ultimate edition Blu-ray releases of the series in late 2021. Uh, also included uh, an extra content uh, such as deleted live action scenes and a short documentary about the making of the film. In the United Kingdom, Anime Limited screened Death, Truth 2, and the end of Amy Gallon as in, hold on, in theaters on November 11th and the 14th of 2021. Despite anime limited permissing the manga entertainment English language dub, the DCP file distribution to theaters for the November 11th screening was 
compelled using more of the more recent Netflix sub. The error was um, was fixed in time for the November 14th screening. On February 24th, 2024, G-Kids announced a nationwide theatrical November a theatrical North American run for March 14th through the 20th in its original Japanese and English subtitles. So that is all I have for for info and stuff. Getting into the summary. Episode 25 Air AKA Love is Destructive. Mm -hmm. Teenager Shinji Ikari is the pilot of Evangelion Unit 1, one of several giant cyborgs designed to fight hostile supernatural entities called angels. Shinji is distraught over having had to kill his friend, Kaoru Nagisa, who revealed himself as an angel in human form. Pop. He visits his fellow pilot, Asuka Langley Soryu, in the hospital where she lies comatose. Trying to shake her awake, he accidentally exposes herself and does stuff over her chromatose body. That's all I'm going to leave that as. And afterwards, sick, sick puppy. afterward, remarking his disgust in himself. Nerve, the paramilitary organization that controls the Evangelions, is controlled by a secretive committee called Sele Seal, whatever we're calling it this week, <laughs> which has been planning to initiate an event called the Third Impact, arp, arp, arp. which will wipe out all life on Earth and achieve human instrumentality. Sele discovers that Shinji's father, Gendo Ikari, the commander of NERV, intends to create his own version of the Third Impact to reunite with his deceased wife, Yui, whose soul resides in Unit 1, apparently. Mm -hmm. Sele dispatches the Japanese military to seize control of NERV and can exterminate its staff. NERV Major Misato Katsuragi orders Asuka to be moved to Evangelion Unit 2 and placed at the bottom of a lake. Misato wants Shinji, who is wallowing in self-hatred following the hospital events, because of course he is, to defend Nerv and rescue him from invading troops, but is fatally shot in the process. Before her death, Misato implores Shinji to pilot Unit 1 and kisses him. Shinji discovers Unit 1 has been immobilized in Bakelite. Gendo meets with pilot Rei Ayanami, who carries the soul of the angel Lilith, apparently. Lee. Gendo possesses the body of the angel Adam except it's not Adam, and he is intent on combining it with Lilith to begin the third impact. Inside Unit 2, Asuka overcomes her trauma upon learning that the soul of her deceased mother is inside Unit 2, apparently. Well, I should figure that out. We figured that out, I think, a while back. Yeah, good that she figured it out. Yeah. She then reactivates the unit and destroys the military forces, but Sele's new mass-produced Evangelion units arrive. Asuka defeats them, but they reanimate and disembowel her in Unit 2. Oh. Unit 1 breaks free of the Bakelite and ascends above Nerve headquarters, <laughs> piloting it. Shinji sees Sele units carrying the mutilated remains of Unit 2 and screams. Episode 26. Sincerely yours, a.k.a. I need you, a.k.a. This is the one that's actually called the end of Evangelion. Yes. Because <laughs> it's the final. Mm -hmm. Ray betrays Gendo and takes Adam for herself. I thought that was Lilith. That was... Lilith. Why does this keep calling it Adam? I have no idea. Either way. She merges with Lilith. Okay, you people don't know what you're talking about, where I got this summary from. <laughs> Who changes into a gigantic white version of Ray? The mass-produced units pull Unit 1 into the sky and crucify it, literally, beginning the ritual to trigger the third impact. Lilith makes contact with Shinji. After several dreamlike contemplations, including fighting with and strangling Asuka, who refuses his pleas for help and understanding, Shinji concludes he is alone and everyone in the world, including himself, should die. Lilith responds by initiating the third impact and dissolving human bodies into the primordial fluid LCL, reforming their souls into a single consciousness. Mm -hmm. And all I have to say about that is, that's a lot of orange juice. Just a little. Mm. Yeah. After more contemplation, Shinji rejects this new state, realizing life is about experiencing pain as well as joy. Shinji's rejection causes the destruction of Lilith, and the souls of humanity are set free. Yui's soul tells Shinji anyone can return to their physical body if they have if, if they have the will to, and they bid farewell, Le Yui leaving Earth in Unit 1's body to serve as an eternal monument to humanity. 
Sometime later, the rematerialized Shinji and Asuka lie on a post-apocalyptic shoreline. Shinji catches a glimpse of the ethereal ray before being startled by Asuka. Shinji begins to strangle her, but then she caresses his face. He stops. Shinji breaks down in tears, and Asuka voices disgust. Wow. wow. Jinx, 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 you owe me a Mountain Dew for that. Maybe. <laughs> Getting into the trivia. A screenshot of an email death threat to Hideaki Anno from angry fans and a picture of the vandalized Gynax office building are among the random images played towards the end of the film. Yes. Because people are stupid and jerks. And yeah, this it's just a TV show, guys. Yeah. I know as a fan member of many fandoms, it feels more, more than that. And it is important, but it's still just a TV show. You don't have to destroy people and send death threats. Yes, people are crazy. Let's just say that. According to Masato, the computer screen she is viewing near the beginning of the film is a file which reveals the truth of the second impact. In reality, from what is legible, it is nothing but a short bio on Gynax and its films. Really? Yeah. Hmm. The film was based on the scripts Gynax originally intended to use for episodes 25 of the TV series, but were unable to due to budget and production problems and TV Tokyo's refusal to allow the episode to be produced for television broadcast. Why, I wonder. <laughs> the second half of the film Too builds much upon orange juice. The second half of the film builds upon the script to create an ending concurrent to the one shown in the TV series. An alternate sequence was originally planned for the live action portions of the film. In it, Shinji dreams of a world that exists without him. The sequence follows live action versions of Asuka, Misato, and Rei in various stages of their daily lives without Nerve, <laughs> Angels, and or Evangelions. It ends with Asuka being followed by an invisible Shinji who realizes in monologue that this is not reality. As the transition from live action back to animation is made, Rei and Shinji discuss the nature of dreams versus reality as seen in the final cut of the film. Portions of the alternate sequence can be seen in the original theatrical trailer, which is shown on the Region 1 DVD before the movie plays. Jacob, hmm. what are your thoughts? What is your first like my, for this film? My first dislike. No, not dislike. Like. Well, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> it, it wasn't a Freudian slip when I said that. I um, hope not, considering this film. <laughs> uh one I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little rearranging because I I was like because when I was doing the notes I was like oh that's that's a good point here and there but why don't we just go with this the animation first yeah the animation in this is brilliant it's done very well it's be like it's obviously it's theatrical it's very it's amazing what a th what a, what an actual budget could do for a yeah. for, for a production yeah a Hideano budget movie. Well, well, we get there when we get ever get to rebuild. Um, <laughs> one day one you will force me into it. <laughs> You're not kidding. Uh, the animation in this movie is brilliant. It's done very well. Very uh, like I want to say professional because everything is, for the most part, looks professional. Mm -hmm. we, we've reviewed movies that look like they were done by a ninth grader in school. We don't, we don't talk, talk about, about Leo. Leo. No, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I was like, okay, which one is he talking about? Leo? <laughs> yeah. Le Food fight. <laughs> yeah. Leo. Anybody? We need to make a shirt about that. We don't talk about Leo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the animation is done very well. Very like beautifully done. Uh, the fights are done very well. The sequences are done. Characters are done very well. And it's just a beautiful film. Very, very beautiful execution wise done very well. And uh, yeah, I love the animation. It's done it, like it's, it's a departure from the series, but it's done in such a way that it does um, reflect what the show was, which is a much bigger budget. Because you, you do have some slight character redesigns here and there, but overall it, it's, it holds true to the show. So yes, animation is brilliant. What is your first like of this movie? Well, so far we're in accord. 
because the animation in this film is very good. Mm. Like I said a minute ago, it's amazing what you can do with a budget. Yes. <laughs> because even the talking scenes look 10 times better than even the action scenes of the television mm-hmm. show. Just because they have money to actually animate everything. You're not kidding. Granted, they do do some some of the... They do. For aesthetic purposes, primarily, yeah. they do some of the other things, but they're able to do so much more even with that, with, with the budget. There's not a moment where I'm watching it and going, this is just not... This is just absolutely beautiful what I'm seeing. Even the stuff that's also disturbing and disgusting. Yes. We'll get to that. We'll get there when we get there. But yeah, it's a beautifully animated film. Uh, and it almost makes me want to watch other animated Hideaki, Hideaki Anno stuff mm. when he has a budget. Not saying that the show was bad by any means. No. Don't get me wrong. No. But it was definitely designed in a way to maximize money for the fight scenes, which left the rest of it kind of hanging sometimes. So... Yeah, I, I'm definitely going with uh, the animation on this is my first mm. like. What's your second like? It's beautifully disturbing. <laughs> Ain't you're, that the truth? You're not kidding. Oh my, it's like, wow. It's like, jeez. Uh, it's like, this movie is just, it's so bizarre that it's beautiful in so many different ways. Uh, I, I think of... Um, when uh, the third impact happens and all the characters are going puff into orange juice, be like, that's, whoa, okay, that is incredibly disturbing, but incredibly beautiful at the exact same time. Or we have uh, Ray, our uh, Oscars fight with uh, the Ape or the Ava series. Mm-hmm. Be like, that, oh my gosh, the, the, the way that these Avas literally turn into vultures and just tear that Ava apart, it, it's so I... gut wrenching. The thing it's so is, gut wrenching. Seeing that somewhere, obviously, yes. it's it, it was inspired by this. Yes, I just can't remember what I saw it in. Mm. It might have been Bleach. The more I think about it, but I'm not possibly. sure. Possibly. Anyway, continue. But oh my gosh, be like the the amount. Be like there's so much detail in this movie. Definitely, when you get to the more gory and graphic scenes, it's oh gee. Wow. Okay, I'm feeling really uncomfortable. At the same time, you're like, "Wow, that's done very well." Like, like again, the unit two getting picked apart by vulture avas. Ah, jeez, that that was that hurt just by look. Just yeah, you're this. not kidding. But it's like, oh my gosh, again, beautifully disturbing. That's why I'm gonna describe it. So that's my number two, beautifully disturbing. My second like yes. for this film is it does not hold your hand. No, it doesn't. This is an issue with some other things, which I'll get to later, but Mm -hmm. this movie does not try to say, okay, this is a sequel to the series. We're going to try to explain uh, as we're getting into this. We're going to try to explain stuff we explained in the series, but Mm -hmm. for the people who were stupid enough just to show up to the movie and not watch the series, Mm -hmm. here's what's going on. No, it just assumes like if you did not watch the series, you don't deserve to know what's going on in this film. And even then you're watching and going, I still don't know what's going on in this film. I I just watched this television series for eight weeks, 16 weeks, however long it's been. (laughs) Four, eight, 12 weeks actually i think yes 12 uh weeks. it's it's been it's been a couple months uh, yes. <laughs> let's just say that uh it I, I love how it treats the audience i guess what i'm trying to get at it yeah. as like you're smart enough if, you, if you've gotten this far you're smart enough to follow and we're not going to give you we're not going to help you yeah. out with any of this even when we go off the wall bouncing off the walls now that has some other issues I'll get to later because mm. unfortunately, and this is the only hint you're going to get at what I'm getting, what I'm getting at is this is a, in a part of that same story. And I don't think the same story explains what's, what's going on before we get here, but hmm. we'll get there when we get there. Yes. What's your third, like my third, like would be Oscar versus the other Ava's that, that'd that be is like, a great fight. That, that was such a great buildup to his like, 
Oscar, uh, so, Oscar's in her 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 mental stupor. She be like, and she her Ava kind of wakes her up, aka her mother wakes her mm-hmm. up, and makes her aware, be like that she has purpose and the whole bit for the first time in in what six seven episodes. Yeah, you're it's not like, kidding. Holy crap, she can be happy again. I forgot about I forgot how she looks when she's happy. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like you get this rejuvenation of who Oscar is. She she her her fire is rekindled as mm-hmm. like who she is and how she can do and be like she taps into the full potential of her Ava through her mother's spirit. And it's just like and then you get these vulture like things. things that are supposed to be Ava's with the what S2 is it? S two drive. S two drives. It's like Which I just shit. still don't know what that means. Uh it's it's vaguely explained in the series, but it's again very vague. Everything in this show is vague. Might be part of the issues I have. Yeah, just a bit. But uh, I enjoy the the fu- where Oscar her or her power connection is severed and it's like, "Okay, I've got 5 minutes to tear into these guys." And sure enough, she does, and it's gloriously bloody and just mm-hmm beautifully animated i wish i had timed it yeah because i'm curious if they actually did that whole thing in five minutes because it feels like 10 minutes it does how much goes into it and it doesn't drag no it just kind of feels like you're just sucked right in and it has you for the, that entire fight yeah and it's like okay this we didn't even get anything this good in the show yeah you're not kidding and we're giving it to oscar because she's the one whose whose unit is working at the moment, yes. and is not wallowing in self pity. Yes, yeah. yeah, we'll get there when we get there. But yeah, uh, Shinji's fight with our uh, Shinji's Shinji doesn't do anything in this film. Let's say that for the first, really, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. He really does nothing. But uh, Asuka, who has like this big shining moment in this movie, and then gets a a eviscerated is the best word yes. my gosh but that in like all of that in, in cul- culmination the entire thing is just like jeez oh my gosh like like i said before beautifully disturbing that scene in itself is beautifully disturbing it's like be like I'm, the the fact be like you it's like oh my gosh be like kids stop please stop it's like nope it's not stopping it. it's not gonna stop oh my gosh i'm gonna you i'm gonna lose it and it's like oh jeez but so freaking good yeah so my, my third is the the entirety of Asuka's awakening in her Ava and her fight against the uh, mass produced angels or I'm calling vulture angels you what's your third my third like for this this is gonna sound weird Masato Masato okay yeah I say it sounds weird because to me, Grant, I know technically mm-hmm. she's probably the only one you could say died in this. Yeah, um, Maybe Gendo did, but he if he did, he did so off screen. And uh, what's her name? Blonde haired lady. Uh, yeah. Oh, she died. Yeah, she died. The main, the, the, the main scientist. Yeah. But I mean, she's Katsuragi. The, Katsuragi. Yes. Thank you. Uh, but Masato is the one given the good death. Oh yeah, I agree. The one that hurts. The yes, one that does. The one that's earned in many ways. I'm not saying the other two weren't earned, but they were earned in a negative way. Yeah. Because you don't like either Gendo or the, mm. or uh, Katsuragi by the end of the no, show. No. But Masato has been the only positive thing in Shinji's life. Yeah. For the series, mm. maybe even for his entire life. Yeah. And her death even though it still doesn't motivate Shinji to get off his butt hurts in such a good way. Yeah. That was like, Oh, cause it was, it was coming. And I was Mm -hmm. like, Oh, you're, you're killing Masato. Why are you killing Masato? Wait, she shows back up later. She, cause I've seen those clips of the orange juice. She's in that. Okay. That's an entirely different kettle of fish. Yeah. But you're killing Masato, and oh wow, it's like Shinji is losing his second mother mm-hmm. in many ways. Because you can say a lot of things about Masato, but she's the only one who gave a crap about Shinji. 
not about him as a pilot, him as a person. Yes. And to see her sacrifice herself for Shinji, mm -hmm. despite the fact Shinji's being an absolute idiot during yeah. this time. I know he's depression. It, it, it's, it's hard, and this is not going to help his depression anyway. No. But I'm still sitting there going, literally, after she's dead, mm -hmm. he rides the elevator down, and he's staring at Bakelite-covered uh, unit, unit one. one. I'm going, get a jackhammer, claw your, dig your way in there, and get in the stupid robot, Shinji. Yeah. What is taking you so long? Why? Why are you sitting on the catwalk? Masato kill, got herself killed big free to save your butt because she thought you could save the world, you stupid. And the... This is supposed to be a light that is like... Don't run away, Shinji! <laughs> <laughs> but that's how good her death is. Oh, I because agree. it angers me how Shinji reacts to it because mm -hmm. that is his... The closest thing he has has had to a mother since his mother died, and she and he barely remembers Yui because yeah. of how old he was when she passed. Yes, it's the closest thing he's known to a mother mm -hmm. and known to actual someone loving and caring for him. Yes. And her death does not motivate him to get off his tail. Mm -hmm. Because I killed Kauru. Good, Masato cared for you more than Kauru did. And remember, he's a freaking angel. You know, he wanted you the to whole... cause the third impact. <sighs> yeah. Woosa. I am not playing the soundbite yet. <laughs> yet. Yet. <laughs> Shinji. No, Masato. Masato. Is my favorite character in this. And I have decided besides Pen Pen, who did nothing wrong, Yes. Masato might be my favorite character in the series oh. because she's the only person who actually is trying to help Shinji. Yeah. Agreed. Now what I think about Shinji is going to have to come up later. Yeah. I, I can see where this is going. Yes. All right. So we are done with our likes. We're done with our likes. Dislikes. Yes. Jacob? Dislikes. My first dislike. This movie is utterly disgusting. Disturbing. Yes. Disturbing. Yes. Disturbing. The event it starts off with. Well, which I didn't even put two and two together at the time. Mm -hmm. I was trying to warn you. <laughs> you did warn me, and I just thought, oh, it's going to be because of all the naked Ray Ayanami later. No, jeez. No, Whoa. I'm five minutes into this, and I'm going, Shinji, what the crap are you doing? <laughs> Shouldn't you be depressed about Kaoru right now instead of what you did? What you're doing? What you're doing? It's like, uh, jeez. I don't even understand why he was doing that. It doesn't even fit what his character was going through at the moment. Mm. Well, there's, Sorry, there's. I jumped on yours. Well, I understand. It'd be like, I understand you're, you're going to go into, you know, what, what I think Sorry, you're going to go into. You, no, you think, uh, no, but like, like, yeah, you get this first go around. I was like, what the crap is going on? And it's like, Shinji, dude, you little prick. What are you doing? But like, I understand you're a 13 year old boy. It's like, okay. No, don't do it's like, mm, Gip slap you back in the head. But then but like, it's just like, what the crap is going on? And it's like, okay. All the angels are gone. Okay. And then. Um, Sele, Seal, whatever, whatever they're called, arp, arp, be like, oh, oh, we we need we need uh Adam, aka Lilith, whatever whatever that thing is down in the basement. I could have sworn it was Lilith. Kauru said it was Lilith. <laughs> Why is this summary calling an Adam? <laughs> but Wikipedia, it's... you have failed me for the last time. But like this movie just goes from disturbing. To even more disturbing, he just ramps up the disturbing, the the disturbance and the the oh my gosh, this is not the force. This is like ah, what the crap? It's it's oh my gosh, it's like like I said, it's disturbingly beautiful. At the same time, it's like okay, this is a, a bit much. Uh, again, one of my likes was Oscar's fight with the uh, mass-produced angels. Gee, mm, 
that that was that was hard to watch. That was extremely hard to watch. There's a lot of this movie that is extremely hard to watch, and uh, mm, like like all of these characters are you know scummy mm-hmm. for the most part. Uh, again, Masato be like, yeah, she has be like all of her characters have flaws, but Jim and Knees be like, what Sele or Seal are are be like what they're doing. He's like, Jim, freaking knees. What are you doing? And then you got, you know, mm. Shinji's dad. It's like Jim Gendo. and Gendo Akari. What kind of f- spoiler of the Akari name had his son not existed. Yeah, true. It's not even his real last name. He took his wife. He took his, 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 his wife's his, name, his wife's name because it had you gave him clout. It's like you little prick. Be like, you're doing this all because you want to have your your wife, whom you put in a freaking Ava. I'm still confused how she disappeared into the Ava. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did because he's a mm, bichon per se. Somehow. <laughs> yes. And they're like, and so he's doing all of this where he can see Yui again. He wants to destroy all of humanity because he wants to see his wife again. And good on Ray for saying no. But oh my, that that's no oh jeez, that scene, jeez, it's like what the frack? This this movie is so freaking disturbing in so many ways. Oh my gosh, the director's name? What's his name again? Hideaki Anno. Hideaki Anno. What are you? I'll be like. I get depression. I get it. I've got mild depression myself, but good night, dude. What is your freaking problem? Be like, go see, be like one, get to know Jesus Two, go get a freaking shrink. Jeez. As I texted you a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. Hideaki Anno needs Jesus in therapy. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a gift slap in the back of the head or two or three. I don't know. Jeez, this movie is so disturbing. There, there are so many moments. It's like, okay, okay. I'd be like, the first time I watched it, I was freaked out. I was like, whoa, okay, this is different. And now watching it as a reviewer, it's like, oh my gosh. Again, beautifully disturbing, but oh my gosh, disturbing. Yes, this movie is really, really, really disturbing. So if you, if you are very, if it really bothers you and like quote unquote unquote triggers, be like, it's like, oh my gosh, you do not want to watch this film because this movie will, Ugh. yeah, mm-hmm. that's my first. It is disturbing. What's your sec- second? First. 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 Just like, first. My first is like, and this is kind of coming off of yours. Mm-hmm. And kind of not. Okay. This is. Neon Genesis Evangelion, the mm-hmm. old bit, yes, is a deconstruction of the mecha genre of it anime, is. Mm-hmm. which started, which, which was pop, and really, it's the tropes that were popularized by Mobile Suit Gundam. Mm-hmm. There's some more thrown in there for good measure, and of course, Hideaki Anno had to go like full bore artistic symbolism on everything, mm-hmm. and. It's not for for that. I don't think it's bad. Okay. My problem is it has as as a and it, this is a taste thing. I'll tell you that right now. This is purely a taste thing. I will get if other people disagree with me on this, and I will not fight you over it. Fair. This movie is. At, because it's because it is the end of this full deconstruction mm-hmm. and showing the problems with all these tropes and actually and showing what happens if you actually fully extrapolate the ideas of the child the, the one the one p- person who can actually pilot the giant robot is a child mm-hmm. and what that's going to do to his psyche that so many other things the idea of the, of the child soldier sort mm-hmm. of a thing yeah, and that's even before you come to the realization that Shinji's mom is in the Ava, mm-hmm. and all the other stuff. 
it makes it for me anyway too dark. Okay. okay. And like I said, this is a full taste thing. It's not that I, I think it's badly done, badly written, or anything like that. I've got some other issues with the writing I'll get to in a minute. But as a, on the whole, mm-hmm. I just don't like the film in general. I can appreciate what it's doing, mm-hmm. but I can't, I can't like the film. Okay. And I can't like the series because it's just absent of what I look for in my in entertainment. Okay. And the thing I look for in any story is hope. Mm-hmm. And you know what this film and this television series have precious little of? Yeah. Hope. Yeah. The closest we get is a hollow hope yeah. near the end. It really feels like after all this is done, that maybe the world is going to rebuild. Except we never get to see any of that. All we see is Shinji try to strangle Asuka again for no apparent reason. Yeah. And she says, disgusting. And I actually read where I was like, I missed something. I had to have missed something. There's got to be some a scene after this. Why is it going back to the... What do you want to watch next screen here on Netflix? Why isn't it giving me the actual thing? And it's because it has what little hope it has is destroyed by her saying disgusting. Because at first when I was watching us trying to trying to dissect it without looking mm-hmm. up what stuff is. Yeah. I thought, okay, the world just came to an end. Asuka and Shinji are basically the Adam and Eve of this mm-hmm. rebirthed world. Yeah. And she hates his guts. Mm-hmm. Granted, she hated his guts before, but she, she had had this full revival earlier in the film. Mm. I thought maybe she's going to be in a better mood. Maybe she's going to see all this. Maybe there is going to be some hope for these two characters. No, there is no hope. They are both still lost in this world, and they both hate each other. They pro- If Ray was around, they'd hate her too. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, because the film ends before we see anybody else show back up, it really feels like every relationship that we had prior to this movie that with the exception of Masato, Gendo and um, Katsuragi, who yes. it's understandable. They died outside of the third impact. They, we, they don't come back. That's just how stuff I can get, how that works. Mm-hmm. But everyone who turned into orange juice is from what I could tell coming back and we don't get to see that. We don't get to see, the, their life going forward. We don't get to see the smile in the end of the television series mm-hmm. at the end of this movie. Like honestly should have happened after every, as, as life was being rebuilt and everything was coming back to normal and Shinji having forgiven himself for all the crap he put himself through mm-hmm. that smile should have been there. <coughs> It ends in the wrong spot, in my opinion. There should be another 15, 20, 30 minutes of story just to wrap up the last of the plot lines to give us that good ending. I get that that's not dark and and deconstructive enough. But I want, I'm not saying I need a happy ending. But you want one. This one I felt needed one. Mm. Normally I'm fine with with a dark ending when it makes sense. Yeah. But this one felt like we were building to a point where Shinji forgives himself for all his wheelie, all his mealy mouth nonsense is what this thing should have been going for. Mm -hmm. And he's still the same despicable being human being. He is at the beginning of this film. There is no character growth for Shinji. No, there isn't. And I'll get more into that in a minute (laughs) because I'm kind of slowly merging that direction, but that's the best example I can give for how, as the final chapter of this deconstruction of the child soldier in a mech anime Mm. thing, it ends with no hope. And I felt like I got to the end of this and it's like, then what was the point there? I I have been watching this since episode one and I feel like, well, I've enjoyed it for the show. Don't get me wrong. And Mm. I've enjoyed our reviews. I'm happy to do that as an, someone who has been trying to watch this, anime for the past 20 years and having a hard time getting through it because of, you know, just different things and timing mm-hmm. and all that other kind of stuff. I feel like a lot of that time I wasted because of the ending of this film. Yeah. I can see that. That's my first dislike. And you can I tell got. how where this is going. I got you. What is your second dislike? Mine kind of bounces off your first. My second is 
<sighs> to to use an old vernacular, an older word, be like Shinji is a stump. He does mm-hmm. nothing through this entire film. Nothing. He, he like be like yeah. He's active in the very be- like he's at the, active at the halfway point. Yeah. Well, be like he's you know, like you get the scene where he's trying to wake up Oscar because he yeah. he he wants someone to be there for him. These be like his obsessive his obsessiveness to be like someone to give him praise and give him this and because be like he he doesn't have a value in himself. He's got to find value in others, and it's just like and be like this and then be like his total like complete inactivity the entire movie. It's like, this is our protagonist of our movie. This is the hero of the film. Yes. He's the hero of the film. And he literally does nothing. Be like the next time we see him, he's under, he's underneath some stairwells, like moping around doing nothing. I killed killed the only person that loved me. He didn't love you. You you freaking idiot. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's like, dude, it'd be like, not in a brotherly love way, not in a sexual way. Right. This was none of that. He had, ab- he, if he, he didn't love you, Shinji, he loved the idea of humanity. And that's why mm. he decided he wanted y'all to live and want you to kill him because I think he hated you specifically. <laughs> Cause you were the pilot of Ava unit one. Yes. Sorry. Continue. You're good. Sorry. You're good. I, I, I can I'm, hear. I'm gonna I, have to get this out of my system on my second dislike. I yes. can tell. Yeah, you, I, I can hear the the bumper being revved up as as I speak. <laughs> but it's like Shinji's inactivity. He literally does nothing because you have this character from the end of the series. I'll be like, yeah, at the end he killed Karu because he had to. He had to, even though he's blaming himself the entire time. Like, he dude, did his job. He did his job. You were supposed to do that. And be like, to the point where it'd be like, he, he believes he has no value whatsoever for someone who has mild depression. Sometimes thinks that sometimes because he's stinking little head sometimes, which is not true. Cause I have to tell myself that every freaking day sometimes, mm-hmm. but like this little turd be like, has so much freaking potential in his life because he led a little, you know, some things happen in his life. Be like, that happens. Be like, we all go through crap. We do. And we, be like, it's understandable. But it is, does not define who we are. It doesn't. And that's what Shinji does the entire time. Be like, oh, I killed Karu. Oh, I did this terrible thing in front of uh, uh, my coworker. Or in front of Asuka. Which, again, slap. What the why, crap are you why doing? Why were you even doing that? Yeah. And like, that's that's a, even before you yeah mm. yes yes anyways um like drew said before be like uh masato is literally a mother figure to him and he's just so he's so self-absorbed in himself that he doesn't even realize that like oh she sacrificed her life and that he's like he's touched by it but he's so broken he can't do anything or he doesn't want to do anything and he believes ever like, oh, no one cares about me. No one cares about me. Dude. Mm. Be like, Masato cared about you. Be like, I guarantee Ray cared about you to a to an extent. Uh, Asuka. Asuka cared about you, obviously. But she, oh no. She was a bit of a, what they call a Sunderay about it, but she cared about you. Yeah. But good night, dude. Be like the, the fact that like he's literally. Kanji cared about you for crying out loud. Yeah, good night. He's barely in this show. Yeah, there, there's there's so many characters that care, love, and respect this character, what he does, but he's so self-exhorted in his own depression or his own be like, I have no value, I have no this, I have no this, and I'm crying over everything. And the 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 thing that got me, the thing that got me was the fact to be like, he's finally at unit one. Masato has sacrificed her life in order to get Shinji to unit one. And he doesn't do anything. He sits there and just mopes and cries and just sits there in a stupor and does nothing while his most Asuka is being slaughtered by those, those angels and like, uh, Ava's vulture angel, Ava's, whatever they are, whatever they are. It's a good night. It's like you're 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 watching a friend, someone you care about, being slaughtered, and you're doing nothing. 
Nothing. And then, oh yeah, the 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 um, AV Unit One wakes up, and then just like everything goes to crap. And it's just like, and he's ah, it does nothing and thinks they were anyways. Sh mm, Shinji, do better. No. Uh, and that that'll lead into my third dislike in a minute. But jeez, like again, main protagonist in this movie, he sounds more like a antagonist to me in some ways so yeah well i'll get there when i get there later but it's like shinji's inactivity just is mm -hmm. basically the downfall of this entire film because due to him doing nothing we have a lot of characters get killed off for no reason except for his selfishness and like drew said be like this this guy literally goes from scumbag in the beginning of the film to the end a scumbag he doesn't change that there's no growth, no development. Be like, I like the end, the end of the TV series, the way to fish. At least fish. that had. He growth. learned something. He learned to love himself. He learned to grow. He learned that people actually care about his sorry butt. But no, in this one, he's a sorry piece of crap. I really hope the rebuild version of these films does this better. It's a little bit better. A little, a little, but. It's like, yeah, Shinji is just a, mm, I'm like, this is a family friendly show. And like, yeah, I don't, I don't, mm, yeah. Beach on first day. <laughs> Anyways, that's, that is my second dislike. Shinji is just a, mm, yeah. On that note, yeah. my second dislike. Rentmaster activated. This audio clip owned by Nate Marchand of the Monster Island Film Vault. For more information, please go to monsteridlandfilmvault.com. Nate Marchand is going to appreciate that clip being used in this episode. <laughs> Just saying. You're welcome. Mate. However, Shinji, get a grip on yourself. Quit being a scumbag. And here's just a wild idea. Be a freaking main character instead of just a glorified extra sitting underneath a stairwell because my be the, my best friend died because I killed him. I don't know why I'm using the unicorn voice for this. Because <laughs> the unicorn had more <laughs> cojones <laughs> yeah, than go, Shinji has. <sighs> Shinji. You over idiotic okay let me inflated. back up let me back up overinflated i get that the death of kauru is the cause him to slip into a depression and i know that depression hits you worse than than just a funk than yes. just feeling sad i know it's worse than that mm -hmm. and you don't really literally i understand when you when depression hits when when clinical depression hits you mm -hmm. which is what this is pretty much supposed to be mm -hmm. you don't feel like doing anything you doesn't matter what's going on it's hard to get a person motivated i understand this i may not have experienced it but i understand it at the same time <sighs> shinji get over yourself you are the hero of the hour. You are the person who the we're supposed to feel excited when you finally go into battle. We're supposed to be cheering you on as you defeat angel after angel after angel. We're supposed to be hurt as you attack this giant version of Ray, you're one of your best friends, and honestly, as we can all understand, technically your mother. In a way. In a way. In a way. We under, I understand this, but we don't get to see you kick But I don't just mean in this movie. I mean, the whole freaking series. There are episodes where he actually gets to do stuff and he is the winner of many bouts. He defeated, or at least he was a major part of every def angel defeat in this series. Mm -hmm. And yes, I understand you to, had to take a life in a very brutal way, not just another human. What, well, what to you, to your understanding, even though it was an angel, what might as well have been another human being and a human being who cared for you 
in a way and made you feel good about yourself. And then he asks you to kill him. If I did not understand how hard that was, I would be throwing, I would be complaining. I would have complained about the what minute long scene and in oh, episode tw- in episode 24 mm-hmm. where it's just the evangelion holding the guy and it's and you can just kind of tell in a way shinji's trying to say do i do this or do i don't do this i get that thing but he wanted to die i know you didn't want to do it but he was going to cause the third impact intentionally shinji you ignorant ignorant person <laughs> i can't even think of good words He's so- you are the cause of the third impact you are the chosen one you are an idiot you are the reason it happened not gendo yeah he he pushed it along but he's not the impetus not Asuka, because she actually kicked butt in this film, and she did everything she could to stop it from occurring. I'm not even blaming Ray because as far as I'm concerned, R- the real Ray Ayanami died two episodes ago when she sacrificed herself to save you. The Ray from the from the, the episode after that and the Ray in this film, that's just somebody else. That's apparently Lilith. That's not the Ray you got to know. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, she's been she's already dead. But mm, Shinji, get off your butt and do something. I can maybe forgive you getting all the way down there and seeing the the AV unit being covered in Bakelite, which I don't think Bakelite works that way, Hideyakiano. No. <sighs> Breathe, breathe. This Shinji is the protagonist. He's the hero. I'm supposed to be cheering for him. Every other deconstruction I have ever watched, whether I liked it or not, the hero still was the person you were rooting for. I never once vote rooted for Shinji. I was disappointed at every turn at his decisions, and it didn't start off great. I was happier to see Asuka Langley Soryu's a character who I don't really like, kick massive tail in this film because she actually tried granted it was all for naught but she had no way of knowing it was all for naught she is the hero the closest thing we have to a hero of this story tragic hero sure but shinji you're the protagonist you are supposed to be the hero i'm supposed to be rooting for you i'm supposed to be caring about what happens to you and i'm sorry but the minute masato dies throws you into that elevator and you get down there and instead of trying to find some way of getting into that ava unit when it's ne- nearly impossible to do so in that moment you sit on the bridge and on top of i'm assuming lcl fluid and just wallow in more self pity Mm. i get that you're depressed you don't have the time to be depressed get off your tail and do business thank thank the lord in heaven that the savior of our world is jesus christ and not shinji ikari amen to that because that world was screwed Mm -hmm. you're not kidding pardon my language are you good mostly mostly okay hideaki i know you were depressed when you were making the tv series and you were not happy when you made this film but you quite possibly made the most unlikable hero in fiction Mm -hmm. congratulations no applause no applause for that third dislike I'm just saying, I think the cast of Twilight are better heroes than Shinji! <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, I, I, yeah, okay. Okay, that, that's, that's a new one. That's a new one. All right. 
Third, dislike Jacob, please. <sighs> kind of like what Drew said just a minute ago. This world is screwed. Because the fate of the world is in the hands of a little narcissistic little prick. And he doesn't think he deserves to live. No one else deserves to live. Because he's a narcissist beyond measure. Because there again, in the TV show, he got better. He got better as a person. Mm -hmm. This movie, he's a little prick who's a narcissistic little turd who does knows nothing of anybody else except himself. There's a great scene where I think it's during the uh, third impact where he has an encounter with Asuka and he's trying his best trying to get her attention. Just love me, whatever. And be like, he, she completely rejects him. And just like a narcissist would is going to blow up and, tr and do very terrible things to somebody because they don't get their way. And this, like Drew said, this is our hero. This is our protagonist of the movie who is faced with the ultimate dilemma. What do I do? I have the fate of the world in my hands. And all I do is wallow in my own self pity, wallow in my narcissism that, Oh, I have no value. So no one else's value. And it's like somehow his own Ava talks to him a little bit. Like, Hey, there's a little bit of hope here. No, there's not. Yeah, there's not. Shinji's the chosen one. Yeah. Chosen one. You know, like at least Anakin Skywalker, at least redeemed himself. This kid didn't. This kid had no redemption whatsoever as a character at the end of this film. It was literally, oh, I'm the only one who should survive. And Asuka, for some reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe she had a stronger will than most people. And everyone was totally fine with just being one entity. Okay? Again, the everything in this movie is so vague. It's not even funny. And it's trying to be this very high philosophy. And again, it's not. It's very low level. And they're going to, if you've taken philosophy 101 in college, you get it. Yes. It's, it's not that hard. The problem is this is the philosophy of a high schooler. Yeah, that's true. Who's watched way, listen, way too much to got to depressing music. Yeah. So yeah, we, we have a, a, a world that is literally gone to hell in a handbasket is completely obliterated because of a narcissistic little prick who does not care for anyone except himself. And I wish we would have had the Shinji at the very end of the TV share, the TV series. And that instead of this little prick who's supposed to be our hero, but in mm -hmm. truth, he's more of the villain of the piece. Yeah. We, we can say third impact. We can say Gendo, we can blame it all. But the fact to be like this kid, this little narcissist little prick, decided the fate of everybody in huma humanity because I don't care about myself. So I don't care about others. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wipe the, I'm going to wipe everything out except for me and the, the girl I kind of have a crush on, but I hate because I hate myself because I can't have anything else except me. You little prick. Bravo. No clap for you. The end of this movie is just so incredibly depressing it's so incredibly insulting. Like Drew said, be like, you are supposed to be the hero. You are supposed to be the one that is supposed to rise above everything. Like he did in the very end of the series. Rise above it. Learn. Grow. As a person. And instead, he wallowed in his self-pity and destroyed humanity because he was a prick. And he was a narcissist and selfish. <sighs> I like Evangelion. I like the series. This movie I hate. I hate with a passion. It's so just disturbingly disgusting. And just, again, like Drew said, so thankful that our our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came and died for our sins, isn't Shinji Ikari. Because mm -hmm. Shinji would have been like, oh, screw you guys. I'm done. <laughs> Be like, I I'm going to go wallow in my own kingdom. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. That our, our savior was both human and God mm -hmm. and chose to save us from our own sins mm -hmm. rather. And then unless, you know, let us um, be separated from God forever. 
praise the Lord, he wasn't Shinji. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is my third dislike. My third dislike for this film. Mm-hmm. Another Ramp Master? No, I'm not going to need it. This okay. is just more of one. I, I'm. This would have been my second had I not needed to get that out of my system faster than I expected. Fair. I am a firm believer in the idea that symbolism when included in a story should be done in such a way that if you missed the symbol and what it was symbolizing, you can still enjoy Mm -hmm. what you're watching or what you're reading. Mm -hmm. That is the way it should be done. In my opinion, I am a believer in, even if you do not explain everything directly, you should explain it in such a way that when you are experiencing some of the stranger things in the story, it is easily acceptable as what it is and not just what were you smoking? I consider this a problem, not just with the movie, because I don't think the movie had enough time to really get into it mm-hmm. other than just show it and pray you did keep up with it. Cause like I said earlier, one of the things I like is that the film doesn't hold your hand. It assumes you've watched the rest of the series and understand mm-hmm. as much as you can, what is actually going on in the series. So you can jump into this and experience the ending of it. And in my opinion, once the third impact starts, this thing just goes, takes a 90 degree turn into Toontown, except Toontown made more sense (laughs) and just starts going off the wall with what's going on. There was not a hint at all of like half of what was going on. What I was watching, what I was looking at, I guessed it was the third impact because it's about the only thing it could be at this point. Mm -hmm. You've got uh the show never told us or gave any hint what the third impact really was it kind of did with episodes 25 and 26 when it was going into the human instrumentality stuff but it really didn't explain in a very no. clear way what was going on. It didn't explain what the end, what the third impact would actually cause because as far as I can tell the first impact, which I'm assuming is when Lilith landed on mm-hmm. earth and created humanity. Yeah. And the second impact was when they woke up Adam up mm-hmm. on Antarctica. I caught that much only because of death. True. Whatever it's called. Got the, it. the, 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 the backup. Cause I guess, cause at least in the Netflix dub, they did not really explain what was going on there. It didn't, no. it took until I watched that thing where it's like, Oh, that is actually Adam. That's they eventually would transport somehow off into wherever Adam went before he yeah. became the embryo. Yeah. But that still makes no sense. Uh, yeah. There was something that popped up. I meant to take a picture of and send it to you that dealt with that embryo. And I can't mm. now remember what it is. You'll figure I it out. I think it was in rebirth, but eh, whatever. Uh, I was completely lost as to what actually was occurring. I knew it was the third impact, mm. but that was so vague. What that meant from both the, from the series and the movie, like I said, the movie does not have time, but there should have been, one of those episodes where they were mostly doing more filler stuff, Mm -hmm. there should have been some, or maybe in the birth of Nerve, that episode, there should be some sort of explanation as to what is the third impact? What is it going to do? What are we trying to stay away from? The only clue we even get prior to that is when Sele goes off the deep end in episode 24. Mm Mm-hmm. Because up until that point, I thought they were fairly sane, if not just shadowy guys. Mm -hmm. But then they go off the wall and decide we're causing the third impact by sending Kaoru in there to to go do stuff. I go, you haven't told the show has not explained to us what even the third impact is going to be, what it's going to cause. What is this actual apocalyptic thing? I'm not saying I need it spelled out. I'm saying I at least need to understand it in such a way that even while 
you're being vague when I actually start seeing what's going on in the end of Evangelion when the third impact is going on, I'm not going, well, I guess that must be the third impact. I should know, oh crap, the third impact is happening. Everything's going to pot. Except I'm sitting there trying to figure out what it is I'm looking at. We didn't even know there was the, uh, uh, it was not clear, at least to me anyway, that the Ava series that we see in this mm -hmm. was even being worked on. Yes, there were production units involved uh -huh. being made. They mentioned that, but the fact that they were all going to be these basically angels, because they're not Evangelion units, mm. not in the way we've seen Ava units throughout the rest of the series. These are entirely new shebangs. Mm -hmm. These things don't probably don't even have pilots. Nope. They are literally human-made angels, mm -hmm. which I guess you'd call demons. Yes. Not that they ever said that. There is just no freaking explanation about what's going on. The minute the Ava series shows up, I feel like the movie has just decided we're just ha we're just going to keep throwing the crap at you at the screen until the film ends. Have fun, guys. Mm. I hope you can catch up. I hope you can follow. By the way. You guessed it. Ray is actually the villain, except she's not, except she is, except she's not. Mm -hmm. Have fun. I'm like, and there's so, and okay. I know I said I was going to talk about my thoughts on the series mm -hmm. after I rated the film. Forget that. I'm going into it now. All my issues in general with the plotting of that series, there is so much they taught, they show you that is a plot point for an episode and it's supposed to be important enough that you're supposed to remember to it's supposed to when stuff happens, you're supposed to go, Oh, that's not good. Except when it happened, I go, what is that? Why do I care? What do I care about the spear of Longinus? What is that? It's somehow stopping Lilith from being, having a full body. Okay. What does that mean? What is that? What, what, what trouble is that? Why is it? Why is Sele pissed that Gendo, uh, had it thrown to the moon and why is it such a big deal when it suddenly decides to shoot back and help Shinji? Why did it shoot back to Shinji? Why, why, why? Granted, I've seen it once. I probably, if I watched this a couple more times, I would probably understand maybe mm -hmm. a little bit better since I'm not trying to figure out what's going on from really Shinji's last hurrah before he sucked into the death dimension <laughs> underneath that one angel. You know which one I'm talking about. Right, right. Because that really was the last high point of the series, or the last uh, emotionally high point. You know what I mean? Yes. And I don't really under, it doesn't feel like it was explained enough no. for me to suspend my disbelief. That's what it gets down to. I'm not saying I need it fully spelled out to me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it's not, there are many things in the series and in this movie that are not explained to the point where I can suspend my disbelief enough to accept it as what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why I think they must have intended this to go on to be like a 52 episode series. And it got cut off halfway through because maybe it just was not getting the rate as many as the ratings that they needed to make it viable for a money making product on television at the time. That's my theory. It's my guess. I don't know. Hmm. It just feels like this, it, the mo the show, the last half of it is sped up to such a degree. And then it's actually sped up too much because obviously it should have ended but it ran out of money and they had to do the best they could. And at the time, there's one word I can describe to, I can use to describe my entire thoughts on Evangelion, the series and end of Evangelion. And one word, you want to know what that word is? What would that be? Disappointing. Okay. Not in the story, in the storytelling. It is, it, it, it craps the bed in the end of it in, in, the, in the final chapters and the movie feels like it's depending on you knowing stuff that was explained in the series and the series did not explain it. Yeah, I agree. But to an extent, I agree. Right. And I, I get, maybe this is just a me thing. Yeah. I get that. 
if you disagree with me, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't enjoy this film or enjoy the series. I'm not saying that it's even, even though I don't agree with the philosophy, I'm not even saying you have to do as I think the way I do. I'm just saying I am as, as much as this show and this movie have been elevated to such a level of importance within the anime and otaku community. I am disappointed at how horribly the writing is in the, in the final chapters. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. So kind of going, I on. liked fully coolly better. Oh, wow. Fully coolly. Yes. Okay. Cool. Honestly, I figure it told its story better than this. This tells its story at the end of it. Now, granted, I've not seen the other, uh, series yeah. of fully coolly i've only seen the original the, the six episode ovas but honestly i even though it is rushed in the last chapter too i feel it does a better job of explaining itself of telling its story than this does in the end because at the beginning it's fine up and up until like i said uh shinji gets sucked down into the mm -hmm. whatever the name of that the adric c is that what they called it something like that something to that effect up until that point the show was fine and engaging and i was following it and it and it was it's it's starting with that episode where it feels like we have to get this done because we only have a certain number of episodes left and we before we run out of money and the and the and the, and the network will continue to work with us to get this out it really does feel like they were intending it to go longer and it didn't. And that's why it craps itself in the end. Fair. That is fair. That's just my opinion. If you think I'm an idiot, that's fine. I've been called, I've been called a lot worse <laughs> to my face by a loud, angry, screaming woman. <laughs> that's an interesting story for another but, day. But we're not getting into that. Yes. Jacob. As we end our coverage of Emotional Damage, the anime series, <laughs> a.k.a. Neon Genesis, Evangelion, everything but the rebuild films, what are you rating this film? Okay, so before I do that, because you, you kind of went, a, you know, deep dive into the series. I, I had to, I had to c complete my thoughts. I apologize. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good, because I think it's a good point right here where... Even Gellion be like, I love the story. I love the characters. I love the, the, uh, the way they are damaged the, because it is a reconstruction of the mecha genre, um, like basically everything. And this whole a combination of everything about this be like, and the problem I do have with Evangelion is the background, the lore and the everything all the high philosophy is never really explained like what is nerve what is sele what are the angels what are the avas there's so much lore there, they there, don't go into there's, at there's all there's so much there's nothing built on it it's literally oh this big fluff stuff oh this is just stuff there's there's no it's real it's rhyme just flavor or text yeah yeah it's, just, it's flavor. just flavor text it has no meat exactly but like yeah it's it's fun to watch it's fun to watch don't get me wrong uh, I love the series all the way through, but like, even though be like, yeah, we had Karu, and I thought that was like, oh, just no, no. But, um, but the show as itself, I love to death and be like, well, I was going to rate the show itself and be like, yeah, it's, it's a high praise for me. Uh, I can see where people don't like it. I can see where people were, a, were stupid enough and angry enough to threaten, uh, uh, Anno about it. Which again, why would you do, be like, just people, just come on, grow a brain. Um, and the whole reason like he made this was be like, uh, yeah, be like, oh, you don't like how I did that. Oh, you're going to threaten my family. You're going to threaten everything in my life. It's okay. So I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you through the blender and show you exactly how I think about you with this movie. And I think this, and I, again, this is a detriment to the, the show. Because they're gonna, it takes out episode 25, 26, and this is the substitute. And it's so incredibly disappointing. But like when I first watched it, I was like, whoa, this is something. Because I was under the big impression. Oh my gosh, uh, Evangelion. Oh my gosh, this and this and this. Now that I'm a little more seasoned and understanding because I'm a reviewer, 
it sours the show. It sours it so badly because we, we have a, a young boy who goes from be like a, I don't know what to do to a young man who finally discovers who he is and he's got to be, you know, okay with that, which is, that's a, a message we all need to learn. Yeah. This takes a big crap on everything and just throws every disturbing thing at you and like just sours the show. Now, will I love the show? Yes. This movie? No. Th this movie is just ugh. in so many ways. So many ways. It is just so vile and disgusting. It's just like, geez. And the fate of the world is left in this little narcissistic little prick. Bravo. You made your point. But, yeah. So... What I'm reading this, this I'm gonna give it a. Uh, now, 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 I, because I, I had a six point five in there. I was like, eh, it's not that bad, you know. Throughout the course, then I was like, eh, no, no, I, I, I kind of agree with Drew here a lot about how this this movie is just a, a, a crapper, and it's just, it, it's done very beautifully, very well done. It's just the story is just like, ugh. And everything. Ugh. I'm going to give it a five. I'm going to give it a five. Like, it, it's one of those, if you're a fan of Evangelion, go watch it. If you're not, you have no clue what's going on. It's it's like watching Gundam Wing Endless Waltz. You have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. And plus, I wouldn't... Like, yeah, if you want to watch something dis disturbing, disgusting, and you have no idea what's going on, okay... Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Watch it. I think there are better versions of that out there, but yeah, yeah go. Sure, there's better. There's better versions of it. I can't stop you from watching anything. Yeah, but uh, would I recommend this movie? No, absolutely not. But, oh my gosh, a five. Yo. Well, on, let, so, let, go ahead. let me save this. It gets a five because the series has a little grace behind it. A little bit. The animation gives it a little grace. That's about it. There. Said my piece. What do you reckon? On the basis of the animation alone. Mm -hmm. As it's about the only... It's the, it's the strongest thing this movie has. Besides Oscar. I give it a four. Oh, okay. The story is not for me. The animation is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oscar's fight is amazing to mm -hmm. watch. It's the best thing in the film. It's, and I should have been worried that it comes so early in the film. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. The animation of the apocalypse is beautiful. The whole mm -hmm. thing is animated on ones mm -hmm. it is brilliantly animated but even the most polished turd is still a turd so i'm giving it a four because it's not as bad as other things we've watched for bad movie month i would not even consider this a contender for bad movie month if we were even talking about it because honestly i don't this is the kind of movie that it doesn't really matter if you like it or not you ha you should be able to appreciate what it's doing even if you disagree with it and i yeah. will admit i do appreciate what it's doing even though i disagree with it and don't like it yeah but that is not what these ratings are. These ratings are not are not a general term of quality. They are a general term of what, whether or not we like the film. And on that basis alone, I am giving it a four. Wow. Anyway. So now that we're, we're free <laughs> for now, for now, for now, <laughs> we, we are done with emotional damage. Praise the oh. Lord. On that, note, on that note, join us on the other side of the bumpers. I don't know why I'm giggling now. Uh, 
Join us on the other side of the bumpers and we will get to what we've been watching, some news, and we will begin a much happier anime <laughs> as we look at the first couple episodes of Spy Family. This podcast is a proud member of Culture Box. Whether you enjoy geeky reviews, comedy, or original fiction, you can open up the Culture Box and find something excellent for your soul. Point your web browser to culturebox.media. This week, because at this point you need all the encouragement you need you can get, and very much well knowing that you are loved, we suggest checking out Geek Devotions. Geek Devotions is a collaboration of devoted geeks who, as I said a minute ago, are devoted to letting people know that they are loved. Shinji needed them more than anybody else this week. They produce a weekly geek culture infused devotional. Their podcast con talk and written articles all designed to encourage and challenge people in the geek community along with every other show in their sister network to culture box in a way this uh it, this all is bridging the gap between their faith and their geekdoms you can find all of their content over at con all of their content over at geekdevotions.com the SoCast would also like to thank the following patrons. Ashley and Francisco Ruiz, Book of Gaming, PaulJPowers.com, Edwin Gonzalez, and finally, the Monster Island Film Vault, who will be joining us in our next episode Woo! because he paid us money to review something. If you would like to pay us money to review something, give us $10. But if you, if you only, if you want that, if you, and that will also get you everything at the five dollar level if you don't want to pay the extra money which will allow you to listen to uncut episodes of our podcast special art from jacob exclusive for a limited time only episode uh, reviews of x-men 97 yes you heard me right we have a limited exclusive series over there go check that out join and uh yeah if you want any of that go donate to us over on patreon.com so Jacob, <laughs> with all this emotional damage behind us, what did you, uh, how did, how did you recover by telling us, I don't know, I just screwed the whole thing up. <laughs> Jacob. What have you been watching? Uh, what have I been watching? So we took a little bit of a small little break. Micro hiatus. Micro hiatus for a day or two. Somebody because was hoarse. Indeed, it was not in, was not responsible. Yes. So only because the transmogrifier still out of juice. I'm surprised you hadn't figured out a way to fix that yet. It tortured. Them. Oh, the parts are on order, but they're a hundred light years away. Well, that's great. Yeah. Saying. Anyways, um, so me and my fiance watched a we watched first we watched a movie that she had never seen which was indiana jones and the raiders of the lost ark exactly exactly she liked it i've always enjoyed it it was a great movie to watch raiders is a great film it's a great film um i disagree with the big bang theory and that indy was not necessary yeah you're, you're not kidding sheldon you're wrong you're so wrong sheldon actually it was not sheldon it was amy Oh, I thought it was Sheldon. Curse Never. you, Amy. Uh, anyways, be like, I, I got a better appreciate for the film because there again, as a reviewer, and sometimes I don't know when to shut up during a film. The curse of having two. I have no room to talk. Yeah, so the, the curse of having two younger brothers and you just run commentary the entire time. So yeah, so yeah, I, I was very proud of myself. I didn't run commentary. So for her turn, we watched Still Magnolia. And I had heard of this film going, uh, hanging around with some women every once in a while. I'm not, let me rephrase that. <laughs> like when I would hang around, hang around with like my, my late, my lady friends and people I know, and they would talk about movies and it's like, Oh, still my movie. Oh, I love still my movie. It's the greatest movie ever. And it apparently it's one of Ashley's favorite films. So we watched it one night. I have to say, be like, it's a good movie. It's not, it's, it's a chick flick, very much chick flick. And, 
Uh, I like the performances. There's the end of the film. You had seen the film. Be like, you might want to go watch it. Might I'm not going to say go watch it or not, but you can go watch it if you want. And some people might be typing in the comment section and be like, still Magnolia is the best movie. Okay, fair enough. But it's not my cup of tea. Uh, I loved uh, Sally Field's performances. All the performances were great. And it's like, okay, I see this coming a mile away. Okay, this is going to happen. Because there again, I've been doing a podcast for five years. Mm -hmm. Be like, you kind of get these things, how movies work and how plots work. So it was a pretty good movie. I'm I'm not going to say it was my favorite. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to watch it again at some point. But hey, you, you, you do that for, you know, your... You know, the the ones you love, right? Not saying that in a bad way either. So, so uh, recently, or as of uh, this last Saturday, uh, I had asked my fiance Ashley if she wanted to go see Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, which is now in theaters. Mm-hmm. And so we went to our Studio Movie Girl in Tyler, which is the town uh, up the road from us. We went and watched it, and oh my gosh, this movie was good. So, I would recommend do not listen to the critics. Don't go listen. Don't go to Rotten Tomatoes. I did earlier today to see the 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 uh, the dynamic shift between audience and reviewers. It is so bipolar. It's not even funny. Welcome to movies. Yeah, welcome to modern movies. So. Like we always say, be like, if you haven't seen a film and you're getting your, your thoughts and your opinions from other reviewers, go watch it yourself. Uh, for me, this was in my humble opinion, it's the third best, uh, Ghostbusters film of the franchise It's it's done so well. It's got good, it's good comedy, good storytelling, um, yeah, it's got a big cast. It's got a big cast. It's got big different sections, but they all intersect at, at one point, which is a really good point. And it's like, wow, this is really good. Now, watching the film, I'm saying like, okay, this is okay. Here's the DX, the the uh, Deus Ex Machina. No, 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 not Deus Ex Machina, but the uh, uh, here's the Chekhov's gun. Where's this going to be used again? It's like I, the there is a certain character in the movie that shows up. I'm like, Oh no, not this actor. Oh great. This is going to turn the movie down a notch three and a half, but it wasn't bad. Like the, the acting is done very well. It's uh, it's got a lot of nostalgia. Uh, like it just, you know, throws that 80 nostalgia rod so far into the eighties. And it's like, it's so well done. I love it. Uh, it's not be like my ranking for ghostbusters goes as follows. Ghostbusters Afterlife, Ghostbusters, the original from 1980, I think 84, I think. I think I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. Don't quote. Don't look at me. Uh, Ghostbusters, uh, Frozen Empire, Ghostbusters 2, and uh, the the one that's the fifth one, which was not good at all. Ghostbusters, answer the call. Don't go watch this piece of crap. Let's just be honest. If you've watched it, you understand what I'm getting. If you like the film... Okay, we can agree to disagree. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Go watch it. Go enjoy it. And uh, let those critics know that like, the audiences do matter. We actually have an opinion. So, yeah, go watch it. Go, go have your own opinion about the film. So, I recently concluded... Um, the series NCIS season two on Netflix. And I just got to say the episode 24, 25 episode called twilight. It'll hit you in the gut. It's a good episode. It is such a good episode and they lead into three and it's just like three is good. Four is good. And it's oh my gosh, season five. Oh my gosh. Because they're going to be like, for me, I, 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 I kind of, I didn't grow up once seeing NCIS because by the time it came out, I was already in college. But that's like, wow, this is a good. Now, granted, it's a 21, 22 seasons already. It's nuts. And how many spinoffs? A lot. But uh, yeah, I enjoy NCIS. I love NCIS for the most part. But uh, yeah, I'm going through season 
season three right now. And season three has got a lot more Easter eggs for a certain character. So, yeah. So, yeah, I've got that. And uh, I'm continuing to listen to Through the Griffin Door, which is a uh, Carl, uh, Super Carlin Brothers uh, podcast. These are guys from YouTube. And they were, are going through right now our chapter nine of the Chamber of Secrets from Harry Potter. And uh, I am enjoying their uh, whimsical commentary on the on the book, on uh, chapter by chapter. So, yeah, that's what I've been watching and listening to. You. So, as y'all probably remember from last week, I am working my rewatching all. Uh, well, I say all of. I am rewatching Dragon Ball, the original original Dragon Ball from 84, 85, 85. And I just finished the Emperor Pilaf arc. Oh. So I just got to see the first wish on the Dragon Balls. I got to see Goku turn into a giant monkey. Oh, and I smash. And I got to thinking there's got to be a way to get Poor this on Monster Island Film Vault. <laughs> gotta be a way but i can't think of a way and a, then a tribute to toriyama maybe uh, maybe but uh, come, he, come on he, nate come on yeah, that come may on. not be what nate wants to do i know <laughs> uh and then i uh it started the great the uh the world martial arts tournament arc which of course starts off with goku training with master roshi and of course Goku gets a training buddy starting in this episode, in this arc. Little bald head. Little bald head with six little cigarette burns on his, uh, scar scars on his forehead. Right. Who may or may not have a nose. He doesn't have a nose, folks. No, he doesn't have a nose. That's why he's able to win his first bout in the Bu Tenkaichi Budokai, mm. a.k.a. the strongest under the heavens t uh, tournament a.k.a. the World Martial Arts Tournament in the English. And I'm sorry, that has less gravitas than the Tenkaichi Budokai or oh Strongest gosh. Under the Heavens. Oh, my gosh. I'm just, it's a it's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, Bobo asks in our chat, well, then how does he smell? Uh, according, what, to a, according to the late Akira Toriyama, he breathes through his skin. Hmm. Okay. I am quoting. Mm. Uh, or maybe what you're, well, if it, maybe this is actually the answer you're looking good for. Uh, pretty bad if he doesn't go take a shower. Ooh, yeah. Oh. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am watching through that and it's, it, I, it's amazing. I'm enjoying how much fun the series is at this early point. Yeah, you still get Roshi being a perv. Of course. And, oh, that's the other thing. There is a new character in here that you probably are not aware of. A character who only appeared in the first uh, couple of seasons, and then literally Toriyama forgot the character existed. The cat? No. Hmm. Poir is there. Oh, Poir is there? Okay. No, this character is a, uh, a young woman who will end up pretty much being the live-in cook for Roshi for a couple of arcs, oh yeah, yeah, yeah who no I'm thinking I'm thinking of um, has the uh an interesting little quirk every time she sneezes she turns into a bank robbing bandit who don't take no guff off no man <coughs> as you can imagine living with Roshi Wow. Fun fact, Master Roshi, Goku, and Krillin can survive a hail of bullet fire. Granted, this is still in the comedic part, so it doesn't really matter. But still, that's like, oh, you survived. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Before the training. Uh, and we get to see the, the, the training where, where you know sh Goku and Krillin are running all across the countryside delivering milk while wearing these 50 kiloton... Uh, turtle shells, mm -hmm. making them, you know, stronger due to the, you know, as is always the way of getting stronger in Dragon Ball. 
just make it to where you can't hardly move because of gravity and you will get stronger. Mm -hmm. This happens later on in Dragon Ball Z where they decide we're going to train at a hundred times Earth's gravity. That should crush you like a sponge. <laughs> it should. You should not be able to walk upright. Your spine should be in should be made of sand now. <laughs> it's coarse gets everywhere. That too. But yeah, uh, it, this the show is fun at this stage, and I'm enjoying it. Um, and there's not been that much filler, believe it or not, yet. I know it's coming. <laughs> It's Dragon Ball. It's Dragon Ball. There's going to be tons of filler later on. Um, so, yeah, I've been watching that. Of course, watch X Men 97. Go listen to our review no, no, on no. that after you yes. spend this five. Oh, my gosh. After you pay us $5. That. Yes. Uh, and then I, I would say be like, it is highly worth watching. It is good. It's it a go, very good show. I do yes. suggest watching it. Yes. Uh, like we were saying earlier, don't listen to the critics because some of the critics are being, well, some of the critics before the show came out were being a little nasty. A little harsh. And honestly, I watched it's like, I'm five years old again. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Yeah. Um, Seven years old for me, but still. Whatever. I'm yeah. just estimating on age anyway. So yeah, this is such a, that, that was a good show. And of course, I am still playing uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I haven't streamed it in a bit. Mostly because I think the Saturday morning idea I had, while fits our show's motif to a mm -hmm. T, doesn't appear anybody's awake at that hour. Because <laughs> I've had so few people actually showing up. So I am probably going to change what time I am doing streaming. Probably, I don't know yet. Uh, so keep an eye out for that announcement. Pro may not go back to Rebirth for the stream, may go to some other game. But I am enjoying the fool out of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That is nice. that game is so good, uh, which kind of threw me because I was really even when before we played remake because we did that on the stream. I yes. I was worried that the sh that the game was just going to be you know we know everyone wants this game we're gonna we're gonna put some money into it we're gonna make it a game but it's not gonna be great the original yeah. is still gonna be better. Honestly, I have no idea which is better at this point. Uh, it's done very good. And even though I know the story and I know the high points, I keep getting interested to see where the story is going, especially since there is the little meta narrative thing that Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy is doing. Mm -hmm. So that's like, there's another thing on top of it, by the way you didn't know it is still telling the original story but at the same time uh by the way uh stuff is happening in midgar and i have no idea how it's happening <laughs> i don't want to get into that you, you you if you want to know go check out that first episode i did and watch the part where zach fair is running around town and sees our crew lying on stretchers and it's like but they escaped and I'm still going, what is going on? I don't understand. And I still don't understand <laughs> because they literally have had only one other scene since then. I just ran across it last night. Uh, that game is very good and I highly suggest it. Um, uh. Wish you were able to join, had been able to join me for the game yeah. like we did with Remake, but scheduling wise right now just wasn't Fair. Work, gonna work. Fair. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all I have been partaking of. Nice. So, Jacob, what do we have in the news? The Cellcast News with your host, Jacob Heron. Thank you, Dealit. And going into the news, uh, Warner Brothers, Warner Bro, Warner, sorry, Warner Bros. Pictures Animation and Dr. Seuss Entertainment has locked in an all-star comedic cast. Either this is going to be interesting or dumb. For what movie is this? The Cat in the Hat, an animated movie 
of Cat. It the- can't be as bad as the Michael Myers film. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. That wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. Said so, Michael Myers. Yes. Instead of Mike Myers. There's a difference. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we don't know a psychopath, psychopath with a, you know, uh, yeah, with a, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we were we reviewed Halloween, right? Both on uh, Movie of the Week podcast. Yeah, now. yeah. So if you want to listen to our our comments on that, go download those episodes, give it a listen. Um, so yes, there will be a Cat in the Hat, uh, which will premiere in theaters globally on March sixth, two thousand twenty six, and the the voice of the cat will be Bill Hader. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I have there. Uh, let's see. DreamWorks. Uh, this is coming from the uh, last weekend. Uh, DreamWorks animation franchise flick Kung Fu Panda 4 held on to the opening weekend, um, uh, retaining the number one box office spot domestically for the second week in a row. With $30 million, uh, that's down 48% from 4,067, yeah, 67 screenings, plus 23, plus 22. The animated family pick uh, squeaked ahead of legendary legendary Warner Bros. Dune Part 2, which brought in mm-hmm. twenty. Nine point one million dollars once again. In total, the fourth the fourth venture of the Dragon Warrior has hit one one hundred and seven dollars one hundred one hundred and seven point seven million dollars domestically as of this previous Sunday. So unless you have anything else, Drew, that's all I have for news. That is all I have. So why don't we have a little fun as we end this episode with a look at a much lighter yes. show, Spy Family. Yes. Bond. James Bond Jr. Impossible. Call me Big Man if you want to face me when you want to face me. The man calls it stones. What an agent, what a squirrel. He's got the country in a world. What's his name? Shh, secret squirrel. Johnny Quest. Anybody want to feel it? Uh, I, I forgot I had that last clip on. Yes, there. <laughs> from Princess Bride. Uh, yes. Spy Family is a t- is based on a manga created by Tatsuya Endo and published by Shoeisha's Shonen Jump Plus Digital Magazine. The animation is a collaborate anime is a collaboration between Wit Studio and Cloverworks, where Wit Studio is animating the making the odd numbered episodes and Cloverworks making the even numbered ones. Hmm. The episodes are made entirely within the realm of a single studio without much involvement from the other. The only exception is for the next animation stage effects like lightning or other special effects, which Wit and Cloverworks work on together to ensure that the process is consistent. I got that from uh, the, the, the website, the Mary Sue and Kristen Car- Carey wrote the article. This is from uh. our first episode, or should I say mission? Yeah. Cause these, all these episodes are called missions. Mission one operation Strix first aired April 9th, 2022 directed by Kazuhiro Furuhashi and written by Tomomi Tawaguchi and adapts the manga from chapters from chapter one, from pages five to 70. Mm. I may have gone a little deep into this. Maybe in this episode, a spy with the new identity of Lloyd Forger must find and adopt a child for his next mission. In this episode, 
first, we have the first appearances of Lloyd Forger, mm -hmm. played by Takuya Iguchi in the Japanese version and Alex Organ in the United, in the U.S. version. Anya Forger, played by Atsumi Tanazaki in the Japanese version and Megan Shipman in the U.S. Frankie Franklin, this that's the uh, the guy with the fuzzy hair. Oh yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. He is played by Hiro Hiroyuki Yoshino in the Japanese version and Anthony Bowling in the U.S. Bond Man, the anime that sh that, that uh, she likes, that Anya likes to watch. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, that character's voice, voiced by Taisuke Nakano in the Japanese version and Aaron Campbell in the U.S. Edgar, the uh, head of the villainous organization that captures Anya mm -hmm. at the end of this and technically he was working against at the beginning of the episode too. That's right. Uh, he was voiced by Atsushi Ono in the Japanese version and R. Bruce Elliott in the U S version. Naguyan, which is not, how, I'm probably not how you actually say that name, Yeah. but he's the one that uh, Lloyd pretends to be in order to break uh, sneak. That's into, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was voiced by Yuji Murray in the Japanese version and Matthew David Rudd in the U S version. Karen, the uh, daughter of Edgar, mm -hmm. was played by Maria Oi in the Japanese version and Tia Bollard in the U.S. version. And our narrator of the show was voiced by Kenshiro Matsuda in the Japanese version and Ben Phillips in the American version. Mm. Trivia for this episode. This is the first episode with the ending theme comedy written and performed by Gen Hoshino, mm. though it is not the normal ending credit sequence with this song. Begin, this is the beginning of the introduction arc, which in, in this one introduces Lloyd Forger, a.k.a. Agent Twilight of Wise from the country of Westalis. The name Lloyd is likely a play on the word Lloyding, which is a lock picking technique hmm. that consists of opening a lock using a flat object like a credit card, which is consistent with Lloyd's real occupation. Hmm. And see, I just thought Lloyd was like Lloyd, L-L-O-Y-D. Yeah, that's all I thought it was originally. Huh. Also, the introduction of Anya Forger, a.k.a. Test Subject 007. Really? Yeah. She is a native of Ostania, hmm. the country that Lloyd is working against. Mm -hmm. Anya is a Slavic diminutive word for the, of the name Anna, mm -hmm. meaning grace. Ah. So her real name is not Anast Anastasia? It's not Anna either. Hmm. <laughs> Anya's former code name, test subject 007, is, of course, a reference to the fictional character dum, James dum, Bond dum, 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 and his dum. code number of 007. Also, Anya's name is most likely a reference to Major Anya Amasova, a Soviet intelligence operative from the 10th James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. Oh, okay. Hmm. Actually, haven't seen that one yet. Me uh, Anya's name was originally uh, written in English in a... Roman letters as uh, Anya spelled A N I A by Tatsuya Endo, and thus was often written as such in the backgrounds of some of the earlier chapters. Huh. This carries over to the anime as evidenced by the sign on her bedroom door. That makes sense. In the anime, it is revealed that the poster Anya wanted to buy was a Spy Wars one. It, this was not in the manga. Hmm. Also, Anya is holding the poster when she tearfully begs Lloyd not to get rid of her, which is not in the manga. Right. In the anime, Lloyd checks his and Anya's rooms after beating the goons, while in the manga, he only checks Anya's room. Additionally, Lloyd checking his room and finding Anya's Chimera doll is an anime original scene. The map of Westalis and Ostania, shown in page six of the manga, and at the beginning of this movie, of, of this episode, mm. is identical to the real world geography of West Germany and East Germany during the Cold War era. Huh. With the exception of Berlin in this universe not having a giant wall going down it. True. Or as it's known here, Berlint. The newspaper Lloyd reads on the train features real life events that occurred in 2018, like Japan lowering the age of adulthood to 18 and mentioning former U.S. President Donald Trump. Huh. Well, that makes sense. The pin number to Lloyd's room is 6110, which, when written in Japanese, is can be pronounced Lloyd. Hmm. 
All righty then. Anya's application number is K212. This number comes from the postal code for Kawasaki, where Endo used to work. Really? Yeah. Huh. Which is what I've got for the trivia for this episode. Now, you've seen the first couple of these yes. episodes yes. before. Yes. But you've not finished. You're, no. You're nowhere, you didn't go past, what, like episode three or four, probably? I think probably. it was three or four. Um, and I, that's kind of what I was thinking. Because we were watching this at Chase's house yes. back in the day. Yeah. And uh, for whatever reason, it may even been Easter now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I missed uh, a Bible study out at his place where we were watching the show afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so when I got home thinking, oh, they're already going to have watched this episode. I don't want to be behind. I went ahead and watched the next episode, episode mm -hmm. five, which we'll get to. And y'all hadn't watched it. No. And I was the only one who kept watching the show after that point. And you got obsessed. <laughs> I got obsessed with this show because it is that good. I went, I, got, I caught up to the English, started over in the Japanese. <laughs> wow. Just because like, I could not stand to be behind where the Japanese was. Uh, so what are your thoughts, though, on this first episode? This first episode was such a treat. It was like, there again, it sets up the characters beautifully be like we're obviously we're introduced to twilight or as he's later known as you just said his name lloyd forger lloyd forger and uh his his task of be like oh i have to infiltrate this this organization and i have to you know get married and have a kid and it was like his his expression when he when he reads the dossier is just like <laughs> what <laughs> It's like, how is this possible? I can't do this. Especially like the beginning before, not the, not when he rips the paper in half, even though that's funny too, but he's just drinking this cup of coffee. He yeah. reads what he wants to do. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, he doesn't even do a normal spit take. It's just like, he's so in character as a spy that he's just still sitting there normal and just spews this coffee all over the paper. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so, and his, his, um, uh, his way of like, it's like, oh, I need to, I need to first, I need to adopt, you know, adopt a child. And it's like, oh, let's go to this rundown, 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 uh, orphanage. Oh, they don't care if you just grab a kid and run. And what, uh, which kid does he grab? Anya. <laughs> so here's the thing about Anya. Hey, she's obviously, obviously I did not mention this. She's a psychic. Yeah. Psychic. She, Very psychic. And more than likely she's actually only four years old. Yes. She wants to be six so she can go home mm -hmm. because Lloyd needs a six year old to enter kindergarten. Yes. This is a four year old child. To give you an idea how smart this girl actually is. Well, it's not really smart. It's more like she's able to read someone's mind. But she, okay, I'm she's saying smart, that knowing too, where wrong. it goes. But her, like, her, tele she, her, tele her telekinesis is, is very good. She She's got a super overpowered technique. It's just she's so immature, she can't use it properly. That is true. <laughs> she doesn't all, even think of how to use it properly. No, but oh my gosh, it's like like whenever like Lloyd is talking, like saying something to himself and be like, it's like, yeah, I'm a spy, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, oh, she's a spy. Oh my gosh, she's so cool. <laughs> Papa's a liar. Papa's a very good yeah. liar. Pa Papa's a big liar, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> so good it's so good like this these these two characters are such a a wonderful treat together it's i mean funny because there again we we just came from neon genesis evangelion emotional damage so this is like right ah this, this is, is a nice refresher this is a nice sad this, this is this is a nice it's it's like a nice fluffy cake mm-hmm and it's just it's nice great apple pie juice. i'll go with cake I never like that fight. Cake is a lie. Moving on. <laughs> Cake is a lie. But uh, I, I I love the dynamics of these two characters. It's Lloyd. He's he's trying to do everything the spy thing, and uh, Anna kind of gets herself kidnapped. And uh, I mean, like he he does the spy thing. You know, just kicks all kinds of butt and just smooth. You know, smooth operator the entire time. And and it's just like. <laughs> what in the world this is it's played so straight but it's such a comedy the exact same time mm -hmm. and it's so funny 
and just like how he like he plays it straight as an arrow the whole enchilada it's like I, this is business for me blah 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 be like i've got to get i've got to get her in the school we're, we're gonna cheat we're gonna do this we're gonna do this and then on is just like oh okay whatever we're daddy. going on a mission we're going on a mission it's, it's great and like this episode is so delightful and we didn't even say where you can go watch it it's, it's on uh it's on crunchyroll crunchyroll if you have and crunchyroll. if you don't mind listening watching the japanese uh dub only it's on hulu too oh okay so yes be like i thoroughly enjoyed this first episode it was a treat to listen to and just the second episode is like, what the crap are we getting into? We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I love about the thing I love about this episode more than more than the rest of it yeah. is, is actually in the ending when after he is in disguise as Naguyan or however you say that name, uh, gets her out of the place. Oh yeah. Gives her the note with this. Oh yeah. Ridiculous story he tries mm. to tell her about how they're all hide and seek people and when they see someone they can play mm. they 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 try to get them to and gives her this note to get her to, to go, go to the police station mm -hmm. so that she can get into a better thing because he's not gonna put a a child at risk like this this is ridiculous mm -hmm. <laughs> and he starts going into his the reasons why he became a spy in the first place mm -hmm. The part I like is the fact that he's saying all this in his mind. Anya's mm. hearing all of it. Yes. And even though before this was just fun for mm -hmm. her, that moment when she turns around, and he's doing that cool walk, taking the mask off and everything. Mm -hmm. You can tell that's the moment that she fell in love with him as a oh, father. Yeah. Figure. Oh yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter. He, mm. that is her father from now on mm -hmm. out. It doesn't matter what he does. Uh, and I just love how you can just tell by the look on her face. This is the beginning of a beautiful family or fake family. Yeah. We'll get to that. But yeah, uh, I, this is a great first episode. Uh, this is still kind of a little bit subdued from where it goes. Subdued. Hmm. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is this. I, I do enjoy this episode, but let's go ahead and jump into the second episode. Yes, mission two: secure a wife, <laughs> which first aired on April sixteenth, twenty twenty-two, directed by Takahiro Harada and written by Reno Yamazaki. In need of a wife for the school interview, Twilight crosses with a woman who might be the right cover-up for his mission. However, she has secrets of her own. No. New new cast members for this episode. We get to meet your forger, or as she's known for most of this episode, your briar. Mm hmm Your bri your bride. Briar. Briar. Briar patch. It that'll briar make rabbit. sense either way. Briar rabbit. We we reviewed that movie already. Yes, we have. Uh in the Japanese version, she was voiced by Sayori Hayami, and in the uh English version by Natalie Van Sistine. We get to hear over the phone the voice of her brother, mm -hmm. Yuri Breyer, uh, voiced by Kensho Ono in the Japanese and Dallas Reed in the U.S. version. Mm -hmm. We get to meet Camilla, uh, one of the the, the head, uh, the, the main jerky co-worker of yours. Yeah. The one that the party is at. Yes, yes. Uh, she's played by... You make a shoji in the Japanese version and Morgan Garrett in the U S version, Millie, one of the other, uh, co uh, her, her, one of her other coworkers there at the, uh, city hall. Yes. Uh, voiced by Manaka Iwami in the Japanese and Caitlin Barr in the U S Sharon, another one of those voiced mm. by Miri Kumagi in the Japanese and Leah Clark in the U S Dominic, who is not only dating Camilla, maybe married, it's hard to tell, but is a good friend of Yuri's. Mm. He is voiced by Shohei Kajikawa in the Japanese version and Jordan Dash Cruz in the U.S. version. Lastly, we get to hear the voice of Shopkeeper, which is yours real boss. Mm -hmm. 
voiced by Junichi Sawabe in the Japanese version and Jim Borunda in the U.S. version. Okay. So, yeah, we started the introduction arc last episode. Mm -hmm. This episode, we end it. Uh, This is the first episode with the opening sequence, which is a song called Mixed Nuts by, and I definitely will screw this name up, Official Hige Dandism is the name of the band. Okay. When Thorn Princess is washing her hands after killing everyone in room 1307, in the anime, the shot is more zoomed in compared to the original manga panel, possibly to reduce the amount of blood and bodies visible for censorship reasons. Uh, uh, yeah. When Yor thinks to herself that she will never be a homemaker, the shot of the floor is changed from the mom manga to be less explicit. In the anime, no blood can be seen and the dead bodies are more out of frame. In the anime, when Yor is waiting for Lloyd, the clock above her is visible twice. She wa- This allows us to know that she waited for him for approximately an hour and a half. Wow. In the anime, when Lloyd mistakenly calls himself Yor's husband, he appears more shaken up from the car accident compared to his manga counterpart, who appears to be in more serious mm. injuries. Right. More serious injuries. Later, when, Yor apo- when Lloyd apologizes to Yor for this, he does so in an awkward manner compared to to his more frantic behavior in the manga. After Lloyd and Yor run from the smugglers, there's an anime original scene where Lloyd and Yor are fighting off the smugglers mm-hmm. before running away again. Yes. And I, for some reason, I did not get which page numbers of the manga this was from. So, what do you think of Thorn Princess? Thorn Princess. Oh AKA Yor Briar. Yeah, Yor, Yor Briar. Jeez Louise. I was like, okay, this is an introduction to a character. And it's like, oh, okay. And it's like, okay, she's this kind of like mild-mannered, you know, young lady. Like, introduction to your Briar? Yes. Your Briar is Chimney. So you're like, oh, crap, she's an assassin. Okay, that's cool. And then we get all of our characters getting to meet. It's just like, and, you know, like, obviously... Uh, Twilight has to, you know, it's like he has to find a uh, a bride for his his mission, mm-hmm. and just so happens to run into Yor, and just like they have this very awkward conversation about everything. It's like, oh, can you be my date to this thing because I really don't want to disappoint my brother and this and well, this and <laughs> go ahead. No, I just was going to mention because you skipped an important part there where it's where Anya plays matchmaker oh yeah that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, she does when she she overhears that yor is an assassin yeah and one of this is one of the times where i feel like the japanese version kind of does it a tiny bit better okay because in america the english version she just says so cool which works but her reaction just feels more childish in the japanese version where she's she goes (laughs) which is apparently (laughs) japanese for that's cool. <laughs> excited. I'm super excited. <laughs> Basically, I didn't say oh it right, but it, it's just so cute. Sorry. Yeah. Go, go back where you were. <laughs> all, all I have to say is like how Drew loves this series so much. He owns the Blu-rays and he also lo- owns the mangas right over here. Off, just mm-hmm. right off. Right off. The... I need to finish reading the manga. Yeah, I'm behind. But it's it's such a unique ep- it's such a unique episode where our, our 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 crew is coming together, and they they have to. They're both having to pretend to be someone they're not, in order to get something they want or they need for a mission or they need for this, and I just find it very unique because these two characters. Obviously, they're trying to lie to each other in order to get something they mm-hmm. need. And then you have little um, Anya, Anya, who's just like, oh, my gosh. It's like, daddy's a spy and mommy is an assassin. <laughs> it's like, Jiminy's so cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. I agree with Anya. This is where cool. I disagree with the narrator, because right after that, he says, this girl was obviously starved for attention. It's like, that's probably true, but... Honestly, this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. And uh like I, I can't remember, do they actually have to 
No, they don't work together in this episode. They just have tried. They're getting away. They do at the very end. Yeah, they do kind of work together at the very end. Where uh, when they're trying to get away from the smugglers. Yeah, because Yor literally comes out of nowhere and just. Pop, pop. <laughs> oh, I sh- I'm sorry. I should not be. I, I should not be helping your patients, Lloyd. Because yeah, that's right. Lo- it's patients. That's because right. Lloyd is. Lloyd's cover is yeah, that he's, he's a psychiatrist. Yeah, he's And the way he covered for the fact that he came in so bloodied to that party yeah. was that, oh, well, uh, <laughs> I had some trouble with my patients <laughs> in a group thing. A group and, session. And a group session. And uh, uh, I had it's to part use of some, the therapy. <laughs> I had to use some, some concussive techniques or something to that effect. Yeah, concussive techniques. And so she says when she does it, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be treating your patients. I'm not... Patience, I'm not really trained in psychiatry. <laughs> oh my god. I like how he actually did fully explain it. This is one of the weird things I noticed. Yeah. This does not have the ending credit sequence because the scene the ending credits play during the last scene, probably because this episode goes a touch longer than you know the rest of them. And so as they're getting going into that 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 last scene, the credits start playing at the bottom of the screen, right? Mm-hmm. It is those credits are timed mm. to just be off screen. Finally, when she, when he's, when Lloyd says uh, something to the effect of, Oh yeah, it's, it's an experimental technique that, that should help stabilize them. And immediately as soon as he says that the words pop up, this is fiction. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh, but it's the fact that they made time. They planned credits to mm-hmm. work around this, yeah. both the Japanese and the English version. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching what this, that is, funny and completely unnecessary but i love it yeah plus let's face it what we might as well call the wedding yeah. at the end of the episode yes yes when the ring that he was going to you uh, use fell out of his pocket and, and so he, used he the uses pin the pin of a grenade. grenade he he pulls the pin throws the grenade back behind there and they he they do the whole wedding ceremony where it's like with this wing Ring. Wing. with this ring <laughs> uh, until, until sick, well, it's not until sickness and, and health it's until my mission for him until my killing for her yeah. do we part Hurts. as she, he's putting the the ring on. on the her finger on the finger <laughs> which is which is the 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 ring on the pin of the grenade <laughs> and just as it gets into position the grenade goes off and it's like this is the start of a beautiful love. <laughs> yeah, beautiful relationship. Oh. It's Anya's going to regret missing this. Yeah, it's very concussive. Well, I'm pretty sure she hears it when they're when she's reading their minds later. It's like, oh my gosh, I missed this. This is so cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, I I love this show. Yeah, and this is a great start. When we watch watch this originally at chases we had neither one of us had any idea no. what we were getting into no. and one of the things i regret is that we cut the end of the first oh. episode off because it's like oh well, now that we've got these two we need to get the mother and we jumped straight into this episode so i guess i didn't realize that they had made it into the mm-hmm. to eden academy because that's the that's the mission here he's got to ha- get a in order because operation strix what it is he has to get uh, close to this man that works for the other works for the the party that's trying mm-hmm. to start the war back up over in the Estonia government. He's a recluse and he only ever shows up at social events at his son's school. So in order to get in, to meet to meet up with this guy, Lloyd has to adopt a girl, uh, adopt a student, get them into the academy, and has to get a wife so that they can do the entrance exam, mm-hmm. which is coming. Um, the, and this is a, a ridiculous premise. B Agreed. it is, it is still a great way of getting this group together. And we, we, it lead, will lead to some cool stuff coming forward. I am looking forward to the next couple episodes because there's some fun stuff going, coming up. I am looking forward to the first time you get to see the punch. The punch. Well, I say the first time. It is the punch hmm. when Anya has had enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was one of the best moments of this, and yeah, that's oh, okay. coming in a. That's a, a couple episodes from now. It's before. It's definitely before the hiatus. Oh, okay, but uh, yeah, 
I, I, I do like I, I do like the show. And I'm glad we're finally getting to do it. Good deal. Yeah, this is definitely a nice refresher from Evangelion. Mm-hmm. Definitely after the movie, let's just say that. Yes. And it's kind of nice not really having a... Because even X-Men, the animated series, had kind of a bit of a pressure to it. Yes. This is like no pressure for me for whatever reason. Yeah, agreed. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this episode. Next week, because we didn't even mention what movie we're reviewing no, next week. No, we're not. And it's actually not next week. It's two weeks from now yeah. because we're skipping Easter. We're taking Easter off. Yeah. We are having our first patron request episode yes. because Nathan of the Monster Island Film Vault has is forcing us <laughs> forcing. to watch, and this will help with the analytics a little bit since it, it is going to be around the time of Godzilla X Kong. Yes. The Mighty Kong, an animated musical from the 90s about King Kong. Oh my gosh. Nathan has already recently released an episode where he reviewed this with somebody else and decided I'm going to torture Jacob and Drew with it. Although knowing how he said it, he probably said Jake and Drew. Jake and Drew probably throws me, but whatever. It happens. <laughs> I call it Jake often. Yeah. Like and so he's going to be joining us for that. Also next week for the TAS, of course, episodes three and four of Spy Family, which are... This will come up. Prepare for the interview and the prestigious school's interview. Such creative names, but it does yes. work. So join us next week for that. You got anything before we cut out of here, Jacob? Uh, no, it's, um, I, I'd be like, I'm, I'm glad that Drew kind of brought this, brought this movie into the, the show, the, the, the TAS, um, section, because they're going to be like, we, be like, we just did Evangelion. And he began, it was kind of a like heavy, but not really heavy. And then we just, we just did the movie, the, the movie for this review, mm-hmm. which was so freaking just irritating beyond belief as a movie. And then we get this nice, like I said in the beginning, very nice, fluffy, soft cake. And it's just nice and enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It might be a pound cake for me because I love pound cake, but yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. I'd be like props to you. They like you, you, you hopped on this and it's like, yeah, let's, let's do that. It sounds good. And so we're doing what volume one we're doing before the hiatus. We're yeah. doing season one, part one, Yeah. or as apparently the term is core one core one, which is like the name of a half season. Apparently hmm. I, this was all news to me, but yeah, it's everything from the beginning of 2022's uh, run of, spy family okay before the hiatus and then when we get back from the hiatus we'll do the second half oh okay so join us next week for our week after next for our continuation on that in the meantime this has been drew this is jacob and we'll catch you in the next frame you can follow jacob on his facebook at jacob b heron his Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox at Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page, Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterbox page at GGeorge759. His Twitter at GGeorge759. And Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at the Cellcast Podcast, on Twitch at the Cellcast Gaming, on YouTube at Cellcast, on Twitter at Cast underscore Cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L.
It's the end of Evangelion as we know it, and we feel fine. <laughs> You're welcome, people.